like this. One, two, no, one, two. I'm invisible. Welcome, everybody. Can you hear us? Welcome, everybody. Can you hear us? Oh, yeah, they it's can. <laughs> There's a delay. Yeah, as it should be. You know, in case you pull out your pee pee can, <laughs> I can still stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here. We'll do proper introductions. Uh, I have two very special people here, which we will not engage just yet. First of all, we'll start with a uh, couple of admin things that I need to do, right? Uh, first of all, let me start by thanking the channel members because, believe it or not, we have people that are subscribed. Wow. Ooh, and cool. Are, and are That's paying. really cool. So there. Oh, one more. <laughs> Is that an actual Bronya. subscription? Oh, uh, Bronya yeah. Labi, yes. They're paying Peñashki. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you very much, Bronya. I have to find you here because actually. Ah, shoot. No. Exit. Guys, okay. another one. <laughs> Wait a little till I find you because, okay, now I need to go look at the updated list. So let me just do that. While we're waiting for that, let me just go ahead and also thank my moderators. These are the people that are in my chat just helping to moderate. And again, I don't pay them anything. They just do it for, for uh, free. And they do it on Twitch. They do it on YouTube. They do it on Discord. So kisses. Wow. So l- let's start with Nati, Enki. George Duklog is also a moderator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's good. Roman Drevo, uh, Cynthia, Lou, Ludmila, and Zendik. I think I'm not forgetting anybody, but I will look at the list. So Just Imagine the one guy that you forgot. Imagine. No, no, I'm going to look at the list, of course, <laughs> to make sure I didn't forget. And now, maybe, Peter, if you, if you guys can help me thank the people, you have them there. So you can read the first... And then Martin can read the rest. Okay, thank you very much, Maxim Vas. Okay, thank you very much, Drift. Or maybe without the thank you very much every time. Just yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much, Max Mental. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, MD. Thank you so much, Vamo Games 12. Thank you so much, NQTTY, NQTTQ. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, <laughs> really Tomas Orosocha. <laughs> Thank you so much, Veronka Esh. Thank you so much, Pauli B. Thank you so much, Jan Bialobok. That's a really great surname. What did, is that a real name or he's making I'm fun of sure. it? I, 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 I really hope it's not a real surname. <laughs> What does it mean? Nothing. <laughs> it just sounds weird. I'm sorry, Bialobok. <laughs> no, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Will Korn. Thank you so much, Patricek. Thank you so much, Tvarohovi Rohlik. Please continue. Thank you so much, Mazurovic, Vendo, uh, Jojo Just. Cynthia, SDX555, Sinister, Ludmila, Slaus, Slauski, Laurent, Mendiu, Adams. Oh, God, and, we got, Art. and we got Nightmare42150 <laughs> that just subscribed as well. And Bronya as well. Wow. So Why a lot of people have numbers in the nicknames? I, I, because I think they want to get uh, a certain username, but already somebody has it, so they have to add some number. Yeah, Usually YouTube is suggesting. Why numbers? <laughs> Usually YouTube is suggesting the number and you just okay. click because you are too lazy We to do it. We haven't even started and you got three new subscribers. I know. That's incredible. Peñaze. I mean, my <laughs> subscriptions are, I have very low amount of money because I'm not interested in the huge amount. And I have them themed in English levels. Okay. So there's the A1, ah, A2, okay. Okay. <laughs> A3. So it's actually very cool. So I think we can go back to to the chat here, Nati. So we thank our moderators as well. So I have very special guest today, guys. This is probably to date our biggest podcast ever. Wow. It's packed with content. It's two amazing people. They're just back from a curva trip. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to hear about it, but actually you're going to hear it only for the first five episodes? Six. Six episodes. Six. And then... We will have a follow-up, right? Exactly. Probably in January. And that that is going to be yes. even more insane. Yes. If you think this is yes. insane. So for the people that don't know you, who the hell are you? And what are you doing here? You can start in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Vlad, Vlad oh, okay. Macho has a special message. So, uh, hola, uh, me llamo Martin. Oh, Martin, bienvenido a uh, algo en español. 
Can I continue in Spanish? Yes, yes please. Tengo 27 años eh, y traductor. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just joking. So, uh I think a lot of people know me. I'm a cameraman. I'm filming uh videos and documentary with the uh, with the Peter. So thank you so much, uh, Patrick Kiss. Uh, but I think Miguel you need to to set it because it's your subscriber not mine. <laughs> yeah, so th- 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 uh, but you are thanking him as well. Okay. Marek as well. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, if you want to subscribe, now is the time. Give give yourself the gift of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm YouTuber, I'm a cameraman, I'm editor, and now I'm DOP, director of photography if oh, you Jesus. don't know what is it. You are everything from, now. From Love Island. Yeah. Everything visual. Yeah, that's me. Everybody compliments me on how poppy G the sound is on the podcast and this is the man. And now the the picture. Okay. Looks Just amazing. let us know if <laughs> this picture is better. Yeah, I think it looks good. It actually you kind of look attractive. Yeah, yeah, for the first time <laughs> in the history of podcast. Well, exactly. Exactly. I keep looking at myself. I'll probably jerk off soon. <laughs> That's why we have the delay, see? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about right. So, what about you? Well, my name is Peter. You may know me as PP Peter. I'm a YouTuber. Um uh I sometimes write books and uh with Martin. Uh we're currently working on a huge documentary that we shot in Latin America and I suppose we're gonna discuss that. It's yes. called Expedition Unexpected Latin America and it's actually our first truly serious project. Um we were known mostly as comedians before. Yeah. But <coughs> this is a this is a this was a new challenge for us. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a, it's a truly serious project. It's it's not funny at all. And actually most people they don't realize the amount of work that you guys put in and we're going to cover it because mm-hmm. actually guys this episode is is strictly dedicated to to that so i know that there was a lot of questions around other topics we may get to them if we have time but i doubt it because we have a lot to cover um concerning your trip i was also involved a couple of times mm-hmm. and, and more afterwards but through, also during the trip during the trip as well you were trying to frantically reach me sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. start with the first episode. And uh you trying to film something and trying to to reach me to to correct some grammar. E- exactly. <laughs> so, why don't we start with that? You uh you arrived in Colombia, right? Yes, that's yeah. the name of the country. <laughs> you flew from uh where did you, Barcelona, right? Oh, where did we fly from? Actually, yeah, I, I think from Barcelona. I have it here. From Vienna to Barcelona and from yes, Barcelona, and Barcelona to Bogota. To Bogota. Yes. It, I think it's take like 17 hours. Yeah, probably. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. I I thought it was 10 10 and a half hours. No, but like the whole trip Bogota. from yeah, from trip. from from Barcelona. our h- houses. Immediately right when you were getting on the plane and you tell the story, what happens to him? His and bad luck starts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the really bad luck. I think about 30 minutes of flying from from Barcelona to Bogota the one guy on on the Peter's right hand have a really big glass of of red wine and something really bad happened and it was Peter have his hand leg and i think t-shirt you you, you had a t-shirt yeah he spilled the Com- red wine yeah, on, completely on From did you wine. change or did you no, ri- you no. went the whole way yeah. and yeah. I didn't have spare clothing. Did the guy apologize at least? Of course, of course. Did the flight we, attendants uh, he, do anything? We actually I befriended him because that was a nice icebreaker. <laughs> hey, let me fuck up your clothes. <laughs> yeah, and uh it turned out he was also he was studying filmmaking in Korea. How weird. Yes, yes, that was strange. And how is how is he going to help you in the future? Or are you still in touch or I don't know maybe if we shoot Squid Game season three, <laughs> <laughs> we they, have a contact there. They, they might bring you as a special guest there were some <clears throat> things uh Peter and Macho that you guys wanted to do and and for one reason or another you couldn't really accomplish them one is about your cameo there was supposed to be a Vlad cameos for five seconds and in, in every video what happened yeah we we uh thinking about it but Let's imagine 
first time you want to film something really serious, something like, yeah, we are first time documentaries. We would like to to show this this documentary for for all around the world, and maybe sometimes you will see crazy guy with this stuff looks like Vlad. And I think a lot of about 99% of people don't know who I am. So I think it would be like from only from our people, for our people. And I think generally it's not good because we would like to 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 share it for everyone. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense to have like goofy scenes, even like five second goofy scenes in a yeah. serious documentary. Well, it must have been already goofy enough. How did people my my question, my the thing I want to know most is how did people react to both of you guys speaking Slovak in the middle of Colombia? Because quite often you are speaking Slovak and there is some people walking around and did anybody ever stop you and ask you like what gibberish you're talking on? Uh, Some, sometimes, sometimes like yes, yeah like in Colombia like what what, what language Antero. is this yes um but this is actually the only advantage of of speaking slovak and being able to speak slovak you can go to whatever country and talk shit about anyone until somebody <laughs> yes yes <laughs> that's a huge advantage especially when we were negotiating stuff Like um, we were negotiating some prices and I was telling him in Slovak like, oh shit, this guy wants so much. Look at this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> shit, how much should I give him? Do we have enough? No, but, I'm not paying But you that. were doing it with a smile on your face. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You exactly. Do it with a smile. exactly. Like, yeah, look at this fucking <laughs> guy. <laughs> you want a lot yeah. of money. Only money. Fuck that guy, man. Yeah. Yes, yes. With a smile. Yeah. Everything oh, is good with When a smile. is it that you guys made the decision? I know that you started planning. The idea of all this came in the winter of 2021. Yeah. For this yeah. trip. Yeah. I know we briefly you briefly mentioned it to yeah. me, but it was just an idea. When did you decide that you wanted to do more than just a YouTube project and go beyond that? I think for me it's because I really like challenges. But when? I really like when? 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 I think you you told me about it. From the first moment we were like like winter like December or January we were like okay let's let's make this serious let's make this huge. And uh, once I st- started gathering more and more information and the whole project started to materialize in front of me I was i was um convinced that this is gonna be the biggest project of our lives so mm. at first it started like okay let's make a documentary and then uh, in about like one or two months into gathering information i was like let's make this fucking huge mm. documentary you guys some of these things that you filmed as you s- say in one of your videos have never been filmed before mm-hmm. how yeah. did you find out about these things like Well, I was in charge like uh Macho was in charge of of the gear, technical. Yeah, yeah and yeah, you yeah, con- yeah, like stuff. a technical yeah. director, director of photography. I was in charge of the the actual content. Uh so I posted uh, a lot of Insta stories, first of all, um asking for as many people from Colombia, Bolivia and Honduras, as many people as possible. Also Venezuela. Mm-hmm. We were not sure which countries we would go to and Venezuela also had very um special content but we didn't have enough funds for and time for four countries so we left and also money <laughs> yeah that that's what i said funds funds <laughs> is the synonym of money okay so, yeah, so it's, it's an english <laughs> lesson as well it's an english lesson as well i know that throughout the process Matteo, specifically for you he was having fun in in front of the camera and you yeah. were behind it so yeah. overall how was your experience you know lugging heavy shit and it was really hard for me because i need to think about i think about everything peter told me yeah matthew we are going to film like like uh i don't know how can say in english uh, uh interview, interview, interview yeah. sorry interview with this guy so i need to think about how need i set it up how I need to put the microphone inside and Let's imagine every single shot you need to have it in your mind. At the beginning you you want to shoot it. And who so had the vision, you or him? 
Peter have a vision, mm-hmm. told me how is his vision, and I need to... He just, was just there to execute my vision. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's always like that. It's really hard. It's really hard. Technically, I'm not that skilled. He is. And he's the one who can perfectly execute my vision since we've been collaborating together for years. Mm-hmm. There's no other person that can execute my vision as well as, as him. There is two things that I noticed because actually... If you guys want to watch some of this content that we're going to be discussing, this is available in Slovak, in Vlad's channel. Yeah. Behind the scenes, you can learn more things that we will cover today. But there, one thing that I noticed between you guys, and I've known you and seen you working together, I've shot videos with both of you, mm-hmm. there's been a change in your relationship. I think it's gotten where you guys are almost like if you date it. <laughs> you are finishing each other's sentences. Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah. There's uh, a there's yeah. a banter that was not there before. Exactly. We know everything uh about about the other about each other. We know everything. We know our fucking darkest secrets. Nobody knows things li- like uh, like Vlad about me and it's vice versa. So yeah, it, it like the relationship is is like this when when we're shooting videos Like the way I look at something, he already knows what I'm trying to say or what I'm about to say. Yeah. I just look at something and he knows what to do. Yeah, but without him, I cannot look this way. <laughs> Why? What what does he bring out in you that you don't, I don't have? No, because I'm for I'm for uh photography and he's from content. And it's like Symbiosis. Yes, symbiosis. This is a marriage made in heaven, I would say. <laughs> Let's go back to the to the first episode, right? How does it happen? First location the where you opened up mm-hmm. the whole thing. Your I think the initial place, the Parque Jaime Duque. Yeah. Jaime Duque. You were supposed to be there just for half an hour. Exactly. And you ended up there for five hours. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what was the problem? <laughs> well, you can start. You know, you, what the pro- try- yeah. you know what the problem was? Also, we have a technical problem with the drone because the first shot, it needs to be perfect. And while Peter walking uh, uh, to the bridge, we need to have like perfect chug in, in the center and also perfect perfect audio. And, you know, the drone is like mm. every every time. And a lot of people still going somewhere in, the, in this... Uh, Yeah, the, the park was the amusement park wasn't empty, and we needed the bridge to be empty. And, and you had all those people were constantly <laughs> like strolling on the park. After all, it's it's an amusement park. You're supposed to stroll around, and suddenly there are two guys that need the bridge to be empty. Mm-hmm. So that was the first problem. And when there was a moment of the bridge Thank being you, empty, we had the take, and uh, you know the the first sentence or the opening thing for the entire documentary is quite long thank it's, you Seema. it's like a it's a minute of talking with no cuts so i needed to memorize it but and we practice it a lot we change it yeah, uh, i know i know <laughs> like um uh i was communicating with you because you, you were Robert. you were the one who w- was telling me if it's grammatically correct almost every time before all my parts like commentaries And uh, it was a it, it was a minute long commentary mm-hmm. or opening scene, and I was constantly stuttering because it's a one minute is fucking hell of a lot of time. That's and if I wasn't stuttering and I pulled it off, he fucked it up <laughs> <laughs> with the drone. So it was probably like it was 20 too takes. Slow, too fast. Yeah, yeah, I think like twenty takes. takes. But I mean, I I, th- I think it was it was the introduction to your documentary, so it had to be yes, yeah, yeah, no, we, yeah. Um, we didn't have any more plans that day, so maybe subconsciously we knew that this would take a lot of time. Yeah. So yeah. And for me, it's still not 100%. percent. It's still not 100%. You guys are perfectionists. It can be better. Yeah. Look, we have somebody from Honduras. Ooh, hola. Ooh, Luis, hola, Luis Chavez. Luis Chavez. You know Luis, él venía con la agenda I apretada. I know Luis, but is he is his apellido Chavez? Luis. Luis. Él venía con la agenda apretada. Just hope Peter and Vlad really enjoy Honduras. Oh yeah, that's that's Luis. That's that's Luis. That's, Luis? That's, that's yeah. Luis. yeah, 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 that's Luis. Luis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's him. I forgot your apellido, Luis. 
You were you always Chavez or did you cambiaste tu apellido? <laughs> it's saying if English is a problem, then they can continue in Spanish. No, it's uh, we're monitoring the Spanish, so don't worry, moderators, don't don't delete or it's okay. Luis is a friend of yes of yeah. Peter we, and, and man, my friends. If it wasn't for Luis, we would die in Honduras probably. Yeah. So yeah. I hope that we will discuss in a future episode Honduras, yeah. but back to the expedition at hand. Mm -hmm. But I think they yeah. don't know about Honduras. Oh, of course they know. We've discussed it in already. Like the last the country episode. is going to be Honduras. Ah, okay. So you know. Yeah. yeah. And there's some crazy episodes, so you guys will have to wait for the next podcast on this. Anyhow, back to there's a very important person that helped during this episode, and I think for the following episodes, his name is Nicolas. Exactly. Yeah. So, h how did he make everything happen for you? <laughs> well, Nicolas was one of those people who reached out to me when I posted the Insta story regarding uh, people from Colombia that would be able to help us. And uh, we, we knew that we wanted to do an episode about Tejo and cockfighting. And uh, oddly enough, he, was, uh, he lived in a village that, where they play Tejo in central Colombia. So we knew that we have to do it with him. And uh, he, was, he offered his help. Mm -hmm. So there was uh, without a doubt uh, that, that went without saying, like, this is our guy. So he helped us in, how long did we stay in, in the village, Sachika? For about a week? Yeah, I think One week, seven huh? days. He helped us with actually the first two episodes. We wouldn't be able to pull them off without Nicolas. And so also with the ants. What, uh, that, that, that's what I'm saying, first two episodes. And he they booked everything. And he booked your hotels and stuff like that. Right? We, uh, he actually, he, his father yeah, his owns father. a um, hotel. A hotel, yeah. So we stayed at their place. Very beautiful nice. really place. Good price. Beautiful place. Of course, probably a discount. Yeah. A little discount. <laughs> I'm there. sure that you guys got a discount. <laughs> Driving in Colombia. Oh. Mateo. Oh come on. <laughs> it was like the worst nightmare you can imagine. I think we we can crush in in every ten seconds. Because it it was like a lot of traffic jam is 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 here. Uh For me, it was like, let's imagine, first time you're driving a car and you have a lot of things you need to, to see. You need to see a road, you need to see a, a steering wheel, you need to see everything. And it was like that. And I'm driving for, for I think, nine years. I think uh, you have... like first time I saw something like that. It was really bad. You're known Everybody as a good honk. driver. Yeah. You are known as a good driver. So. Yeah, of course. And <laughs> sometimes I really want to try what happened if I honk. Just honk. Yeah, he was <laughs> just randomly honking <laughs> yeah. sometimes. I'm surprised you didn't <laughs> get stabbed. Yeah. 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 For doing such things. How did you get in touch with Arsenio? Ooh, I think that that was work of Nicolas. He had contacts all over the region. So he contacted someone in the village of Turmeque. That's the village where Tejo was born. And he somehow found Arsenio, I think. Yeah, Nicolas, Nicolas uh, reached out to him. Yeah, yeah. It's all Nicolas's we, work. So he was like your Yoda. The contact from the square, from Turmeke, from the square on the left side. You, Did anyone at the s in the square? I'm not sure. I'm not really... No, I think it wasn't Nicolas. No? You know, it's so, so long ago. I, I think we went to the... Because it's not mentioned anywhere how yeah, you can. We went to the town anything. hall of Turmeque, mm -hmm. and we we told them that we were making a documentary about Tejo, and also asked them I if, think they, they, and, and if they, they had us. someone like, preferably someone older, so it would look good. Mm -hmm. Like we wanted to make an interview with someone who was old and who was has been playing or had been playing Tejo for fifty, sixty years. So I think they. Yeah. They, they give us the gave us the contact for Arsenio. You um, wha hopefully. One of the quotes, uh, Peter, that you have in this episode is that the episode went according to the plan. And that's something I've never heard before <laughs> from you. Something always goes wrong. But this episode, it looks like everything lined up. Is there a reason why? Um, well, I think, I don't know who, who made it possible. Probably God. Because our vision of the episode was that someone, someone 
older. This was before filming the episode. My vision of the episode was someone older should teach me how to play Tejo and then I should participate in a tournament. That sounds like an erotic and dream. We, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then we found Arsenio and also we found out there there would be a tournament the next day in uh, in in Sachika. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was the village where we stayed. Where Puma yeah. kicked your butt. Exactly. <laughs> so everything went according to plan. That's what I meant. When you, what was your impression? I know that you've seen these things, but but Matu, you not so much. What was your impression when you arrived at the tournament on time, and all you see is a table with four people getting wasted and nobody else around? It was like, fuck me what is wrong with these people <laughs> why it's it's 6 p.m and no one is here it's already closed and yeah and peter told me martin welcome in latin america exactly <laughs> exactly everything's like that in latin <laughs> yeah. america it was supposed to start at six or seven or something and it started like i think about sex yeah sex six sex. sorry you yeah. think about yeah. sex yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, I think about, about sex yeah, yeah, yeah. did you try tejo I think yes, with Arsenio. Of course. But maybe two or three times. And what was your experience playing Tejo? Did, is, was it actually something you enjoyed? I enjoyed it. I truly enjoyed it. Is it? The more I drank, the more I enjoyed it, of course. But, you know, I enjoy these kinds of games. It's... Pingero. You also well. Pingero, yes. <laughs> Pingero. You remember yeah. well. You remember When well. When you compare those two, which one is more enjoyable? Well, they're both kind of weird. <laughs> well, that's why I compare them. Uh, that's really that's really hard. I don't know. Probably Tejo. Probably yeah, Tejo. Yeah, because of cerveza. Uh-huh. <laughs> because of cerveza. Pivechko was there all the time. Then the I th- I think the rest of the episode that uh, going to the restaurant that was a very stressful period for you oh, guys. Shit. This was actually your first argument. Yes. During the trip. So yes. from your perspective, I, I want to he- hear both sides. I think you can start. I <laughs> need to think about it. Well, it was very stressful because we had our time was extremely limited. Um because in one day we had to film the entire ant part, uh the the hunting of the ants, so we had to wake up at like 5:30 a.m. or something like that. And uh then from the forest, we had to find the rest then we had to go to Uh, the city of San Gil, drive mm-hmm. about 45 minutes to San Gil for a scene where I bought the ends and tried them, and then back to Socorro, 45 minutes uh, back again, and then find a restaurant that would that would allow us to film the actual preparation in the kitchen. It, it, like, And we also need to find Can you bar. imagine, like, y- you're having guests, you need to cook for them, and... Two random guys just appear out of nowhere and they want to film the process. So I think we needed to pay something, of course, for that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then they prepared it and we, we had about 20 minutes to to do the to, to film the eating part mm-hmm. and the commentaries. And I was stuttering so much. Yeah. You can continue. That was our first argument. Yeah. Because we, we don't have a lot of time for, for a shoot. So Peter needs to prepare what, what he want, want to talk about this food. And I was like, come on, Peter, I don't have a lot of battery. And also SD card are, are full. And come on, we don't have a time. And he, he was like, stop yeah. shouting at me. Yeah, and he was constantly like, Peter, okay, I know you're stuttering. I know you're nervous, but please, we have like four minutes. <laughs> yeah. Please. And when you hear this, you get even more anxious and nervous. I you think it was the first that, time no. we were shouting about... Yeah. And people were looking at you guys shouting Yeah, at like other. the people yeah. from the kitchen and the, the servers were like, these guys were supposed to shoot a normal, proper documentary, <laughs> yeah. like a positive documentary, and they're constantly <laughs> arguing about something in yeah. this strange were Russian language. Were you at least language. smiling? Like, no, about no, no, we were not smiling at <laughs> no. that time. No, no, no. It was awkward. It was awkward for the servers. I'm pretty sure about that. So, guys, ch- typing in the chat, uh, we are going to get to the chat at some point. So, okay. don't mind if we do. Let's see. What's the most effort you put into something that didn't end up making it to the documentary? Hmm. What scene didn't make it? Teresa from Nitra, hi. What, what scene didn't make it? 
<laughs> čo, sme, čo sme také uh, natočili, alebo chceli natočiť, alebo vynaložili sme nejakú snahu a, a nedostalo sa to tam. Máme vôbec niečo také? No, rituály. Hentým, áno, áno, áno. Rituals, the last episode. The last episode. Rituals. Last episode. Sergio. Sergio? Sergio. Oh, so we will discuss. Right, okay, okay, so, okay, okay, yeah. so we, will we, will, we will get to that. And actually, you need to there. actually I, I, I did bring my holy water. For El Diablo. For El Diablo. For El Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll let you know by the end of the episode. Stick around because we'll be talking about El Diablo. Yes. And actually, there is a devil uh, in this room. In the room. And, we'll and it, he's visible. He's not like just some spiritual ghost. Here. I will need to exercise this room <laughs> and probably burn my expensive I can chair. Give you a good contact. Yes. <laughs> Or Thank, priest. <laughs> Thank you so much. One thing that I am trying to to make sense of is you're an insecto yes. type of guy and yeah, you were yeah, eating yeah. bugs. Well, that's just eating. It's not like they're if they're not alive, I'm fine. Really? That's so weird. Yeah, and I'm only scared of bugs that have uh, a sting. <laughs> but I'm were, not scared of flies. But or the ant were they were stinging you, and you oh, were okay no, with that's it. biting. That's biting. That's very specific. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's very specific. I'm not afraid of huge ants. I, I I think I wouldn't be even afraid of like no scorpions. I would be afraid. But it's mostly hornets and fucking bees and wasps and, and geese. Shit like that. Spiders. <laughs> no, no, I I'm fine with. You spiders. can become Spider Man as well. Yep. Maybe one last thing before we move on to episode two, and it's you were claiming to have a psychological breakdown during this uh, the hunting of the big culona ants no yeah las hormigas culonas they're called big budded ants because yeah. it was i can bring you sage yes please i need sage first time for me was like 95 percent of humidity i need to to have a bag it i think it was like 10 kilograms and also have a five kilograms camera we need to walk about two hours and let's imagine if if peter with the hunter walking some somewhere i need to be l- like the first person in this place just need yeah. to film it wait yeah, there from different angle and af- after maybe one minute i need to just just walk you were going just under barbed possible, wire yeah. and It was just a crazy experience. And I also forgot about water. <sighs> Jesus so Christ. It was like three hours of, of hell. It seems you forgot about water today as well. Uh, we'll, we'll get him some water in a second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> very good, guys. Guys in the chat asking questions. We are going episode by episode, so it would really help us if you ask questions related to the episode and you save any questions related to other episodes for when we get there. So now we're getting They to episode stick two. stick around till the end because... Yes. At the end, we're gonna slightly discuss the next episode, yeah. which, yeah. in my opinion, may be the best one. I'm not sure. There are still some really great ones from Honduras yeah. coming, but the seventh episode... Uh, I think it's, for me, it's like the best... W- be- not be- best look, visual. For me, is visually, really visually... visually Visually episode. And also, th- I think the most things happened. Yes. yes. Crazy yeah. stuff. I'm currently um, finishing with the edit, and it's insane. It's going to be like 30 minutes long. It's definitely the longest one. And there are so many things. So, guys, stick around till the end because we're going to cover what's coming up, and you don't want to miss little spoiler. episode seven. Yeah, little spoiler. Even you didn't cover so much, so <laughs> it'll be a first. Okay. We will cover episode two. Uh, donkey yebat. That's cockfighting. Oh yeah, cockfighting is second episode. Uh, I'm I'm getting. <laughs> I want to get already to, <laughs> the, to, the, <laughs> to the donkeys, but yes, you are right. It's the it's the the rooster fighting, the cockfighting. Yes. So you actually started filming this episode before you finished the first one. Yeah, exactly. What was what was the reason that you were doing that? Because our time in Sachika, the, the village. Uh, where we stayed in in central Colombia was very limited so we needed to simultaneously film uh two episodes and like three things that was ants uh tejo and also the cockfights that's why and when your time is limited you need to m- multitask yeah. it's always like that so you gotta maximize your time uh yeah. Effie I don't know why you didn't get the notification for this Uh, but you're not too late. We just covered the first episode. We are getting to the more exciting, meaty episodes. And at the end, mm, 
we have a lot of spoilers for the next episodes. Um, yeah, so the there's a little bit of misinformation here because I think in the video it is mentioned that it it is legal because the police was there watching and it's not illegal. But you guys, in your podcast, you were discussing that it is illegal. So what's is it legal or is it yeah, illegal? But I, but I put it, it is legal, but it will probably become illegal or be illegal very soon because there are so many protests. Um, I I read many articles in the last few weeks that it will probably become illegal very soon. We probably mis, uh, misunderstood something in, in the podcast, but it is legal. Sti- okay, so it is legal. To this day, so it is legal. And I also put a phrase about it's legal. Then- uh to to my podcast okay maybe i missed it but it's good that we settled that information yeah, it is legal why why do you think that your episode was really becoming like you said it like a detective story in the beginning mm-hmm. why, why were people not upfront about the information of where to find if it's not illegal what were they afraid because of? it's on the verge of becoming illegal Um, maybe Central Colombia, um, maybe people in Central Colombia and the police in Central Colombia are more relaxed about the topic. But in big cities, they're like, no, we hate it. We hate it. And since we were speaking, uh, we didn't look like Central Colombians. So they may have been thinking that we're like from PETA mm-hmm. or from big cities. We may be like uh, investigators. So... They they said like no I'm I'm not go- g- not giving these guys any information. This was one of my stopping. concerns, and I actually I I want to ask Matthew about his perspective, because I know you're crazy, mm-hmm. like you, you will do whatever. But <laughs> this was Peter walking into first of all random farms, yeah, where he didn't have permission to be. You guys were flying drones in areas that you don't know. Weren't you guys afraid that you could film the wrong thing or enter the wrong type of farm and like that's that's the end of it? Yeah, every single minute in Latin in Latin America, I was like, maybe this is my last minute, because you you I really don't don't know if if it's okay here if it's like a private area. I don't know. I don't know. So for me, it was like if Peter told me it's okay. I was like, yeah, well, just I, do it. I myself, I I, I uh, felt like on an episode of Narcos sometimes, especially when we were trespassing <laughs> in that property. And you mentioned that for you it was like investigative reporting, but it's not like that. It doesn't work like that in I know. in Colombia or I know. Guatemala. Yeah. Or but I thought like if anyone uh, shows up, we would be like, oh, we're just lost. Sorry. But it always worked. It always yeah, if you play dump. It, If you play dumb, it always works. Unless you see the wrong thing. Yes. You were lucky that you didn't see what you were not supposed to see. Mm. Maybe, because that could have turned well, out... Well, my plan was to play dumb all the time. Like, oh, estamos times. perdidos, <laughs> disculpa. And a lot of times it, it was like, yeah, it's a vacation video. Yeah, with a huge camera. <laughs> It's the, just a vacation when, when did your heart leave your epicardium? when we were going to a neighboring house of that farm and then a, a huge dog just started barking we I never saw the do- dog in the episode it's just yeah because <laughs> like i th- i didn't see the the actual he was probably on a leash mm-hmm. but my first instinct was just to run because it was a huge black dog and uh i just ran and he had no fucking clue what was going on. Let's imagine I'm just looking <laughs> yeah. to to screen and and Peter is not here. Uh, what the fuck where is he? <laughs> yeah. It's an urban legend the dog. <laughs> yeah. No. Like the urban legend. <laughs> I was so scared to go there again because I wasn't sure if he wo- if he was on a leash. Mm. That's why. Somebody saying that the drone was about to meet the Colombian escopeta shotgun. Well, escopeta is <laughs> shotgun? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. But actually I never felt that unsafe in central Colombia. Not sure why. I never felt truly unsafe. Yeah, I think because Colombia has evolved a lot where it's not like controlled by the narcos. Mm-hmm. I think you would have a different experience in Central America now. Mm-hmm. Um because there like thank you for subscribing, Lucas. 
Well, to be truth be told, I was in one of the worst slums of Honduras, mm-hmm. and I also didn't feel unsafe. So, I think I have a lot of experience going to these places uh, that internet claims that they are super unsafe. Mm-hmm. But I never had a really bad experience. Maybe in Senegal, but mm-hmm. apart from that, not really. You mentioned that you felt safe but Matteo you you mentioned that y- the car was always running and the door was always open yeah <laughs> because i don't want to i don't want to have the same experience two times in this day so just to be safe just to be safe what's up with the sound trsh trsh what is your obsession with trsh what is trsh yeah i know <laughs> uh the drone shot trsh. ah trsh. <laughs> Oh, you're gonna see that in the in the documentary, in the in the full proper documentary. The, um how oh, this is really hard to explain. <laughs> Peter it's it's basically a, a transition sound. Like and the drone comes the in. New place, mm-hmm. With the drone shots, Peter have like like and also the sign of, of, of the place. Yeah. yeah. So oh, and, and there's a real sound or you made it, it up? It's It, there is a real sound and it's, it it's resembles whoosh. the tsh, it's, it's like whoosh. It's But not really it's whoosh, like it's like tsh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think you know. <laughs> That should be your next merch. And tsh. Yeah, he's tsh. the <laughs> only one who really understands what yeah. tsh is. Well, hopefully more people in the chat know. Um what you were describing your relationship with people, right? And <laughs> you were saying that when you're visiting uh, you know any any new place or a place where you don't know people or you need something from people you have the widest smile. Yeah, that's true. So how how does how has that worked for you? Or how perfectly does the strategy the work? Perfectly all the time. Uh, even like when I started going to Africa to these unsafe places, if you have a wide smile nobody's going to do bad things to you because with you're a wide smile your yeah, intentions you are always be. great with a wide smile. Unless you have a creepy smile. I'm not sure. What <laughs> about your date? with uh Leandro's sister. I d- I didn't <laughs> go on a date. He, he made fun of that. I he she was married. Oh, okay, so she, she was wasn't married. single. Oh, no. I don't know. I wouldn't dare going on a date with a Colombian girl from Central Colombia who was married and also the sister of a guy who owns a cockfighting business. <laughs> and just six of his cocks are three hundred thousand dollars, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. That was quite a situation. From uh from your perspective h- how was it to finally meet? So you spent a lot of time searching out this guy, Leandro. Mm-hmm. Did he meet your expectations? He was completely different. Yeah. He was super friendly. Awesome. We thought he would be like this narco character. I also thought that they would yes. be some yeah. scary like big Yes, Grand, uh, everyone was super friendly. Even Rafael, the other guy in the video, we will discuss him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. super friendly. Everyone, Hola, amigos, <laughs> yes. everyone, really nice while doing the interviews. But inside the arena, not everyone was that friendly. Especially in the beginning, when we walked into the arena with a huge camera, yeah. but also wide smiles, of mm-hmm. course. But People, people at the beginning were extremely suspicious. I can you understand could sense why. That. Yes. Let's imagine two foreigners. Yes. Just but I was just like, cameras. then I bought some beers. I started to chit chat with some people there, and they saw that we're friendly again, white smiles, and we're, we were all friends in about an hour. The description that you guys had of the of the cockfighting arena, that's just a typical Kurchma here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's in everywhere marriage, in the yeah. world, I guess. <laughs> But uh maybe for the people that uh that want to hear more about that description. The description of of uh walking into that place and what you saw with your eyes. Well, the first thing that comes to my mind was the can I say this the density of the air? Yeah. And the smell of blood. I think it was smell of blood or something. I cannot I cannot describe it. It was humid, extremely humid inside and the smell of s- some like animals and blood in the air eerie, eerie at the beginning, eerie. When, when you and were also raw meal. And there's like blood 
inside the ring everywhere, like like little driplets of blood. And then when you see the actual cockfights with with the with the roosters or the gore blind blind oh. and just pecking the air because they cannot see where the op- opponent is mm-hmm. just pecking the air and one eye is just uh uh swinging jesus christ that's, that's fucked up man. that's quite morbid can you tell that's me fucked up. before you got into the actual fighting what's the sound that the roosters make the sound yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the sound they were making there when they were picking yeah. them up and yeah. putting oh, them out there <laughs> something like that but nothing special i think yeah. i thought it was something special that because mm. you were referring to that was uh, there a special I sound no, i think it's just normal sound of like like <laughs> yeah and and this is I, i think it was you who said that this was probably the or was it you that you were mentally like properly fucked uh, we were both yeah the both we were both. both fucked because you see an actual death every eight minutes Or maybe six. It's it's an animal, it, and it's not a small animal. It's not mm. ants fighting. Didn't it's an actual big animal that dies yeah. in a brutal fashion every eight minutes. Did you become desensitized, or you as well? What is desensitized? When you stop feeling it, right? You feel extremely bad the first couple of times, and then you just like. Yeah, because you you still need to have a really big smile. Yeah, everything is okay in this arena. Yeah, but deep down, uh, uh, we, yeah, we, we like couldn't stay there till the end. It was bad. It we was need bad. to go away, I think, in after one and a half hour. Uh, something like that, or two hours of film. Yeah. But I, can, too much I can imagine you pretending to be okay, but were you able to pretend that you were having fun? We had to. Yeah, we had, we to. had to. Otherwise, it would be suspicious. We couldn't Why be filming like... Why guys oh. filming this with the... Oh. Fuck, they what would, is it? They would definitely oh, yeah, think it's amazing. We you would like to film it. Yeah, come on. Were come you on. really saying that wish you had this in Europe and yes, stuff like that? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they were asking like, "What do you think about this tradition?" Mm-hmm. And they're so proud of their tradition. So we couldn't say like, "Fuck you, man. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. I hate this." So we are always like, "Oh, I love it. I we don't have this in Europe. I <laughs> wish we had it in Europe. Such a cool tradition." But you know what? It's it's kind of yeah. I know it's unusual for Europeans, but at this stuff like this happens in Europe as well. Like in Spain, you still have bullfighting, for example. That is true. That so, is true. But I never attended. I I probably I I wouldn't attend bullfighting. No, it's animal cruelty. Yeah. So and those are bigger. Is, yeah, that's my opinion. But but I couldn't fully express my opinion since it's a proper documentary. You have to be objective. Yeah. If um. Matthew, if I can get you to describe the the process of the fight itself from your point of view. So for me it was like two random random cogs just fighting, but after about ten minutes I I see two two options how, how they can fight from t- to each other. For first you just need to, to bite and back. Peck, it's peck, mm-hmm. so so peck, and also the roosters have something like a steel. The spur, a, yeah, the, the spur. spur. It was like I think they put the glue, and the big, uh, big. They tie it. Yeah, th- they tie their, it. Their and also the two. Uh, referee. Referee, just judge. just. Still, I don't know this word. Rips it. Now, yeah, gaff, rips it. metal gaff. He rips now it. Oh, oh, now street. Um. He sharpens, sharpens, it. Sharp. sharpens it. Yeah. Sharpens. So you have and two you learn a new word, guys, to to sharpen. Yeah, to sharpen. Uh, so yeah. it was like I've never seen cock fighting in real mm-hmm. life, so I, I can't imagine the experience because I'm very sensitive to animal cruelty. Mm-hmm. I I can put up with people cruelty, mm-hmm. but animals just hit a different way. Mm-hmm. But one thing that I respect, and I think we discuss this a lot, is about Um, even when we were talking about the grammar, is that we know that this is cruel for us and we see it from the eyes of being here. But there's always, you say it, there's always, you, you say it in Slovak, you say there are there are two sides to, to every coin. Exactly. But the English phrase that we can use is, that's the Slovak one, and there are two sides to every story, right? Mm-hmm. 
How did you decide that it was appropriate to show both sides? Well, it's always like that. It has to be shown if it's a documentary. We cannot just say that it's terrible. We all we from the first moment that and that was our intention with the interviews. We wanted to see their perspective because people were obviously enjoying this tradition. So we wanted to dig deeper and dive deeper into it. Why? Why do you enjoy it? Because it is cruel. So why? And they explain it in a really comprehensive way, I think. Uh, at some point you were asked to stop filming. You remember what happened? Who came? The Raphael, right? <laughs> the Raphael. No, no, no. In the arena. In the arena. The Floydy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Police, <laughs> okay. Police. okay, the police guy. I just want to film it. And uh, I think you told me. I told you like, man. Yeah, but police. you don't care about anything. So why no, did you? No, but that's police, man. That's police. <laughs> so you respect someone. Of course. <laughs> like, I, I police just... in Colombia. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I just want to film it. Because if you're talking about, yeah, the police officer just just came to this arena and you cannot and you don't don't have it mm -hmm. so i think no one can believe you but actually you also mentioned i think maybe during the episode i don't remember where i heard it but they were sitting behind you no at some point the three police officers or never no, behind just no uh, behind. a lot close of, next like to close, you. yeah next to us yeah um th there's one story that made me giggle and it's the fact that with Rafael mm -hmm. because you and I know this from you yeah that uh, sometimes you're not interested and you're just like yeah don't, don't even bother to record that cocot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you decided to yeah and the result was magic I think it he was, was magic. he was, it was magic. He, he, he was even a pleasure to to do the subtitles for oh yeah yeah he was the guy who who explained it so well because um What was the name of the first guy? Leandro. Leandro Murcia. Leandro Murcia. <laughs> uh, he couldn't explain it in such a De detailed way. way. And he wasn't that passionate. No. He even wasn't. though even though he was the owner of the business. But Rafael, the, the, the trainer of, of the Cox, he was incredibly passionate and he wanted to tell us everything. And we were so lucky that you actually pressed the recording yeah. button. Be because I think after two minutes, you you look at me and and said me, Martin, this is it. This is it. Yes, we got it. Yeah, it was it was a very interesting interview. He was showing everything, like the also the economy around it, like the feed and the, even yes. the craftsmen creating those boxes for transportation. Yes. It, was, yes. it was very nice. Uh, I'm gonna get you water because it's warm here, so I'll bring the water. Can you guys answer some questions in the chat? Of course. Yeah. So go ahead, and I'm gonna get you water. Okay, is this mouse function? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, it works. All right, let's discuss some questions. Let's go to the oh, very it's beginning. Oh, of questions. Let's go to the beginning. Okay, this is where when we started. Did you already offer the project to some platform like Netflix? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We have to finish these episodes first on YouTube. And then the next step is offer Can them to me? some streaming platforms. Ah, okay. Ooh, that's cool. You have a lot of cool things. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm poor. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we discussed one question. We can continue. There was something about uh, when are you going to Presho? Go to all the way down? Because you promised to, yeah. to someone. What, what am I going to uh, Presho? Up there, yeah. I have a question. Because you promised me, you, I promised you I would go to Presho. When you was on the stream with Duke Lok and you were doing quiz and I knew the names of the Get the Look Cats. Really? Was it really me? Wasn't it Doke TV? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure. So Cynthia, you, I'm not sure. I, I'm not planning to visit Presho anytime soon. You don't unfortunately you don't travel so to the east, away. right? It's so far away. But maybe maybe like in April if that episode with the with the slums materializes, you know, with the baptisms yeah. and Okay. Maybe maybe mm -hmm. like April. So actually that's something to look forward to. Yeah. And actually I have a surprise. 
uh, that I will announce as well during this episode. So you guys better stick to the end because there's a preview of his next episode, which is absolutely pff, nothing Mind we will blowing. discuss today m- matches that. And there's also something that we will do together in February. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yes. it's, it's very I limited. Know. It's I very know. limited and exclusive. So you, you want to stick around to find out, especially long-term Slovak fans mm-hmm. will appreciate that. So let's continue. So that's, That's the end of episode uh, two, number two. two. Yes. Um, you guys okay with the flow? Of course. Yeah, I'm okay. You guys in the chat, now we're going to episode three. If there are questions related to episode three, now is the time to put them in the chat. This is where you guys were coming across like uh, the perfect storm of bad things. So shitty transportation, the weather, mm-hmm. the hotel. Uh, and then all of a sudden you arrive to the hotel and you scream, you hear a scream like a girl. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what was the story? So I think we were on this hotel for two months, for two months, for two hours. And after we, we come back to our hotel, mm-hmm. I was in my room. And after five minutes, I just heard a, a just screaming like like lady ah, ah. that and was me yeah and i was like oh maybe you want a million dollar or or what happened so i i i go to your to i went to your you room no mm-hmm. yeah we're not yeah. in the same and room he, no 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 no, 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 no. Two, two different room and I, he, he i told me we wouldn't be able to sleep with Martin. With this snoring guy. Yes. But in the island you were... Yes, because there was no other oh, option. No other we were option. in a very small <laughs> island. The the rooms are very limited <laughs> And also island. only one bed. Yeah. yeah. So, but and he told me I have a cockroach, the big cockroach on, on my bed. And I was like, oh, come on, it it cannot be that big. <laughs> you, you you never seen Latin American no, cockroaches. No, that, that, <laughs> God bless it you. It was like this. It was huge. And they are they are terrifying in Latin America because not only are they huge but they fly so yes they yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. shit I'm having goosebumps <laughs> I'm I'm having goosebumps right now <laughs> they fly across the across oh, the room <laughs> fuck <laughs> you wouldn't eat it dead <laughs> oh. and he, he killed look goosebumps you killed I, it I yeah that's I, those are actual goosebumps I killed yeah. him. no I, I killed him I'm not sure probably I don't remember my shoe. I usually Black, I I have blackout. Not only uh, not only did you have like the whole forest visiting you, but <laughs> but you also wanted to catch the Rona directly from the source. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you were the man here. You were the hero. So what happened afterwards? What did you find in your room? <laughs> I found in my room. It was like this, I think. Uh, I'm thinking about word Batman. <laughs> yeah, say, say something because out. if people just get the context of It's you going bat. like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's bat, no? Yeah. Bat. bat, yes, bat. It's bat. Like I I found something really something like that black in, in my room. I just turn on a light. <laughs> Again. It was like like this, something black in my room. <laughs> <laughs> just And then the receptionist <laughs> fucked me. I don't know how. I don't come know how on, that happened. Come on. <laughs> Don't be bad at me. That's my English, come on. No, no, I that's... I think you understand. Yeah, of course. Of course we understand, but that's that's more and of a joke on the words. Yeah. And l- let's imagine, how can I sleep with, with the bath in my room? Maybe I can <laughs> get the corona one more time. Yeah, Or rabies. Rabies is probably yeah, the yeah, probably the real thing to worry about. But there was a combination of... You were not used to the humidity... You, I guess, experienced it before. Yeah, so. but you never get used to it with those European genes. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> this was the, actually, this episode probably, if you rank it in difficulty, was one of the most because you had no local support, right? Yes. Yeah, first time with no locals. Yes, especially, uh, like, we found a local after some time, uh, Camilo. Camilo. We but know. he wasn't our fan Like uh, Nicolas, you know, when it's your fan or someone who follows your videos, it's it's more pleasant. This was a guy who worked in a town hall. So but, he, it, but he became your friend. Let's say yes. 
Was this the guy that was giving you opposite information than the lady? Yeah. From the same place yes, they are working yes, together? Yes, 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 yeah. yes. But again... The same place, the same room in a town hall. <laughs> but this, you know, this is so funny to me because, you know, people are listening to it. They're like, oh, Colombia is so disorganized. But this is my experience every time I have to go to some Urat <laughs> here <laughs> or to foreign police. One, once during a for, foreign police visit, mm -hmm. when, when it used to be in the old building and it was a mess, mm -hmm. you would have to wait in line to get information. You would get a ticket for information. Mm -hmm. I waited in line and I asked, I need to do this. And the guy's like, oh, just press this number, right? I press the number. I wait like four hours. Mm -hmm. It was typical in foreign police. I get to the line after four hours. It's the same guy. And he tells me, oh, that's the wrong ticket. <laughs> Come on. No. <laughs> Yeah, that's how things used to be there. But luckily, oh. things have changed and they are way better. So shout out to foreign Everything police. Don't don't deport me. Digitalized. Please, please don't <laughs> deport me <laughs> for my opinion. <clears throat> so the communication with the Urat, it was absolute mess. You didn't know if the festival was happening, it was not happening. Or maybe just a part of a festival. Yeah. yeah. Why did you still decide to go? Because... Um, You know, um, there was no other option. There was no other option. We didn't have anything uh, better or more interesting prepared in Colombia. Well, actually, we had one thing, and we never spoke about this. One of the things we, we wanted to do in Colombia and wanted to film was Armero. You know, you know Armero. Uh, can no you idea. Google that if that's yeah. If, I'll if Google it's it. Armero. I'll look at it in my phone. I think it's Armero. Oh, you will Google Armero. Yeah. While we're googling that, uh, the malicious Smurf saying hi from Romania to both of you. Hello, <coughs> hello to Romania. Romanian mafia. Somebody was asking if yeah, you've been to Armero. Armero, Transylvania. Yeah. Armero is a ghost town. Um, I think the second biggest explosion, volcano explosion in Latin America, happened oh, there. Oh, that would have been cool. 30 years ago and uh, it's cool. basically a huge cemetery and uh, people claim that you can sense the souls like the the restless souls still being there the place um you don't believe in this kind of thing that you feel energy left behind by i th I, i uh after the ritual That's episode i i just be careful because yeah demon yeah yeah no, <laughs> no, demon is still here yeah yeah but um so Like we had to go there because we didn't know if it was, if it was actually taking place and if it's happening. But if it's not 100 no, it's always maybe. Mm -hmm. It's always maybe, and maybe is only a little bit. Um, it, it's so close to yes. It was a hail mary, is the yes, expression we yes, would hail use. Mary. A hail mary. Yeah, <clears throat> macho. They tell you that. Even when you know that it's happening, they tell you, oh, it starts at five, oh, it starts at two, oh, it starts at three. So you guys take a gamble and show up at five in the morning, sleepy, ako kurva. We curse yeah. in Slovak, yeah. not in, in English. Yeah, the first day. And, and there's nobody, that. nobody yeah. there at 5 a.m. Yeah. So it still was like, welcome in Colombia. <laughs> But we really want to shoot it. So for us, there was no other option, but we, we need to, to wait. If something happened maybe in one hour, yeah, we need to, we need to film it. And what happened? So 5 a.m.? Yes. The first day, you remember that? The first day. First day of, oh, the, of festival? the festival? Yes, at 5 a.m. We woke up really fucking tired. Yeah, and no one on, on the square. Yes, nobody. Everyone's sleeping. But all of a sudden, what happened? Yeah, then we were about to go back to our hotel and sleep more. And then all of a sudden, trumpeteers. Is it trumpeteer? It could be. Yeah. Tr trumpeteers and dancers and probably like 100 people. Did you expect them or it was just no, out, out of nowhere? nowhere. <laughs> out of nowhere, just from some corner. <laughs> I just heard that, that's some, Latin some America. Some little yeah. explosions. <laughs> yes, that. Yes. I just heard some little explosion and it, it was made from this guy with the fireworks. Yeah, with the fireworks. Fireworks, yeah. And this is, uh, I had Roman Konya here the, from Meso Od Romana mm -hmm. and he was in Guatemala mm -hmm. and he was explaining to me that this is, I'm sure you experienced it before, but maybe you didn't, that it, 
we are obsessed with these loud fireworks and anytime there's a parade or anything it's like the first thing you hear okay. and people normally think that it's you know some guns or yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah did you enjoy it no uh, the first moments no i was so tired i was because you know what happens in san antero in northern colombia i'm pretty sure you remember this yeah very vividly with the music yeah yes The music never stops. Never stop. It, it, it doesn't stop till like 2 or 3 a.m. And we were unable to fall asleep with that fucking loud music. And so we slept for like three hours and then we had to wake up. And, and then nothing is happening. So we we're like, why the hell did we wake up? Who the hell told us that it's starting at 5 a.m.? So, still sleepy, we're he heading back to our our hotel, and then tsh, out of nowhere, fiesta. No, yeah. And what's I think strange? It was like six a.m. or or no, at it what was time? Like five five thirty, you say. Five, yeah, five thirty, you said. Five thirty, okay. and then after like one hour of the fiesta, it stops again. Mm -hmm. It stops. Out, just it just stops. I think what really bothered you is that they were <laughs> drinking at five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He just couldn't believe it that they yeah. were having a cerveza. Uh, it's 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 unbelievable that they party for like one hour. <laughs> it seems like okay, this is gonna continue till night, mm -hmm. and then it just stops for like five hours again or six hours. They have to get the donkeys ready. Yes, that's yeah. true. Which brings us to that's our true. to our next question, and that's the the donkey. So I already know what your favorite donkeys are. <laughs> Macho, what about you? <laughs> so, <laughs> and by so the way, asking about the uh, fucking donkeys, yeah. By the way, no, 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 no. And by the way, look, can you just give us a before we get his answer? You have time to think of. So walk of on Judas. the on the parade. Which was your favorite donkey? But while you're thinking, Macho, this is actually a collector's item. This is the exact T-shirt I wore during the donkey festival, and. uh It's Miguel's. It's my gift to him, and uh, he's probably gonna auction it for thousands of dollars. Yes, or maybe give it to so, to a follower. Yep, that's the exact T-shirt. When we get to a hundred thousand. But actually, let's make it even cooler. Sign it for me. Ooh, all okay. right. S sign me like one of your French girls. All right. Here all on right. the no, tummy. No, here on my. Isn't this like white? Will it yeah, be visible? I th it should be. No. Here? Yeah, try. And if it's not, we will find another marker. Is it working or not? No, I think uh, you need to find another marker. Yeah. Uh, You're just gonna it's have not a pin there. So that's a secret signature. Yeah. It's even worth more. We will look for a marker. But actually, let's take two seconds to sign the PC because we forgot last time. Ah, okay. Sign I, the PC. I don't yeah, have PC? your signatures. Every guest has signed. All right. That's nice. Yeah. So... While while they're signing the PC guys, I'm gonna have a look at the chat. If you have any questions relevant to episode three, and also me, yeah, as of course, also you. It was just a question. <laughs> uh, let's see the questions. Uh, the baddest chill we had one in the cottage near Keshmarok. Okay. Anywhere. Close to you. Anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Peter, how does it finally feel to be on top of the PL table? Uh, I don't know what that is. Premier League. That's English Premier oh, League. That's oh. football or soccer for you. What a waste of time. That no, is. no, no, Premier no, no, League. no. I'm finally happy after after almost 20 years of suffering. We're finally on the top. But I don't have expectations since we're talking about Arsenal. We may still fuck it up. It's always like this. Yeah. Better not uh, jinx it. But I see, I see some really great future. Ludmila is asking if you have any plans to explore abandoned scary places in the future. Mm, mm, not really. That's not my that's, thing. That's not your thing, right? No. So, uh, unfortunately, that's not. Mm. I know that's why I asked. Okay, so thanks. So, the question was my favorite donkey. Your favorite donkey during the parade of donkeys. <laughs> Mine was Putin, like yours, with the tank. I think the same. Or no, this one, uh, the dancing donkey. The 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 Luis was, Diaz yeah the Luis Diaz Luis the dancing Diaz. donkey the Premier yeah that's my favorite from Liverpool yeah were donkeys actually wearing makeup yeah yeah 
Yeah, most of them. A lot of makeup. Most of them. So were they actually using human makeup? I'm not sure about that. Probably. I think yes. I'm not sure about that because human makeup is tiny. <laughs> Donkey's yes. face is huge. It's huge. There was probably some colors like dyes or something. Yeah, but do you think existing uh, animal makeup? Existing? No, it was some colors like artificial col colors or dyes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I hope they didn't harm the donkey. But actually, it's not in the episode and it's not mentioned in your podcast. But we had this discussion uh, outside of everything. And you... No, no. It was in the interview that I was doing the subtitles, but it didn't end up in the episode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's the fact that the dressing up, they are very careful and they honor the, and treat the donkey nicely. They mm -hmm. wash it and they... Yeah, take yeah. them for a walk. But yeah. I think it's inside the episode. I think it made the episode. Was it? Yeah. Thanks, Patrick, for, uh, for subscribing. Yeah, I don't remember if I saw it there, but I, I know definitely mm. during the, yeah. the subtitles. They treat them well, yeah. And then they... Uh, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that whole region, I think that they are losing donkeys and they're trying to find a way to... Because now they have machinery to do the work exactly. for them. Exactly, so. yeah. So it's kind of a conservation, this... Yeah, and this also, um, it, I really like when traditions are preserved. And this donkey festival is quirky, but it's 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 nice and strange and uh, interesting and fascinating at the same time, and I love it. I don't like the other things. <laughs> Which gets me to, before we get to that juicy, juicy stuff, you seem to be having a lot of fun during the festival. You're yeah, drinking yeah. a lot yeah. of aguardiente. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. It was fun. The festival was fun. Not for you, I think. It wasn't fun for you because it was yeah. extremely hot, and I... I was look. I wasn't carrying a, a huge backpack and a camera. Mm. I was there to have fun and comment on it. So that that's my experience. But his experience, I think, it's completely very different. Very different. Very yeah. very different. Yeah, and we will touch specifically on that experience when we get to, for example, the salar, salar, de which is also very interesting for you. How did you find out about the donkey fucking? Um. I think I saw an episode of I, I saw because saw, you know I put Donkey Festival on YouTube as I was gathering more and more information, and then one video from Vice popped up, and it was about uh, donkey sex. Mm -hmm. So I, since I'm a fan of Vice, I clicked on it, and there was actual a guy. There was actually a guy who fucked the donkey at the end of the episode. It was a nicely done documentary. So that's how I. Found out about it, but that was like you had seen that ten years ago. Yes, that was that happened yeah. ten years ago. It stuck with you till then? No, no, no. I actually I I saw the documentary uh, this year when when I was uh -huh. gathering information about the content we were about to shoot. Okay, I thought that you had seen it ten years before. No, 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 no. Uh, as you mentioned, people from the coast in Colombia have bad reputation of being aggressive and mm -hmm. not very friendly, so. How did you went about to get information from them about this, which seems to be a very taboo topic? Well, they have just the reputation, but they're not unfriendly. Everyone was really nice. Yeah, We had no nice. problems. Camilo and everyone who was helping us and, uh, and also who we teacher. interviewed, yeah, the teacher yeah. that we interviewed, super nice people. So it's just the reputation, but nobody was really uh, unfriendly or aggressive. And... Um, We went there to shoot the festival. We were not thinking of shooting an actual sex. You got extremely lucky. Yes. Yeah. But uh, um, when this idea came first to our minds was actually when we were finishing the interview with the professor who yeah. was a super, he was wise and funny and charismatic and all the answers were thorough and he explained the history of the festival And uh, I was... It was the last question. Yeah. We actually didn't prepare this question. We, I didn't want to ask him about the donkey fucking. But he was so open about everything that I, that I decided to ask him. I started the question like, I'm a bit ashamed <laughs> before asking. I'm so sorry, professor. But uh, we've heard... How did you ask, ask it in Spanish? Uh me, me da mucha vergüenza me da mucha vergüenza eh, preguntar preguntarle a esta pregunta pero escuchemos rumores que a veces en esta región 
alguna gente, especialmente en, las, uh, en los pueblos, tienen sexo con burros. So you were like walking on eggshells. Yes, like yes. yes. Tried to get around yes. it. But And my... he, was like, he was like, listening, listening, listening. I was like, uh, stuttering a little bit in Spanish. And then the reaction was like, Of course, I even I I lost my I lost virginity with a donkey. Everyone fucked a donkey when I was younger. Yes, everyone is fucking donkeys here. And we're like, what? This was in Spanish, what? so you couldn't enjoy. It just yeah, happened. Every interview f was me for like, yeah, he talk about something, and I need to ask Peter, what did he talk? How did you keep a straight face? That was very hard. <laughs> That was very very hard. For me, it was easy because I don't understand. <laughs> You know, that was, was very, very But hard. But he, he was not ashamed, not embarrassed. Not at all. And that was the moment when I realized, okay, we have to find someone that actually fucks donkeys still, and we have to interview that guy. <laughs> and Camilo actually helped us with finding the guy. So we interviewed the guy, and uh, he was so open about everything. He he had just one requirement, just... Blur, just blur my face, guys. Just that blur my face. And let's make the interview in a forest. I don't want to talk about this in front of other people. Yeah, that guy was, uh, even from listening to his uh, interview, he, he sounded very friendly. He was yeah. super yeah. friendly. Super friendly. Really nice guy. And at first he was a bit uh, shy. Mm -hmm. But then as he saw that we were not judging... Maybe inside, like deep down, <laughs> I was judging a little bit. Uh, But we were like, okay, 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 that's, yeah, you fucked 25 donkeys. I'm fine with that, of course. It's so, okay. Yeah, it's okay. You But prefer the, donkeys. My whole thing with this is that uh, this is a story that people don't know of how much of a piece of shit you are that you wrote me at, I believe it was three in the morning or two in the morning one day. And I got up like all groggy eyed and I look at my phone and I'm like, are you, are you up? You said something like that. And then you send me a video yeah. and I'm like, okay, what the fuck is this? And then I play that shit and it's without censoring. Like I got to see the whole thing and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong <laughs> with you? <laughs> I guess you, you were still in shock from what had happened. I think. Yeah. Like so, the thing surprise. is we were, we were not, um, we were not planning to, to shoot an actual fucking of the donkey. But at the end of the interview, when uh, you turned off the camera, there were donkeys in, in the forest. And uh, we had like a 10 second loading moment with the guy. Like I looked with at the donkey. With the eyes, yeah. It's yeah. Like, and we were yeah, like, you know. Oh, oh, oh. And then out of nowhere, he, like, he was like, I'm going to fuck the donkey. Like he offered it? Yeah. I'm you gonna didn't fuck ask. The donkey. No. I'm going to fuck the donkey. And I was like, All right. So I, I don't understand. And Peter told me, Martin, <laughs> film it. And I, I was like, oh, come no, on. No, and then I, then I asked, like, are you okay if we film it? And he was like, yeah, just blur my face. <laughs> and after that, Peter just told blur me. My and I was like. And you were looking at this thing happening or you were not looking? When well, he had yeah, to look because yeah, he I was. I need to look because I need to focus. And? But I. We don't want to, to shoot it. Mm -hmm. So. I shot it like, yeah, that's the information and that's the footage needed to to film. So I I tried to use an angle with, with this tree <laughs> to be not that good visible. So it's like, for me, it's a footage with the information and nothing more. Because, I come on, I don't want to shoot it how, how this guy fucking donkey. So it was... It was far away. Is I it going to be right. uncensored in the documentary? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Not the face, but... Uh, no, the, the face will be censored yeah, yeah, yeah. in the, the documentary, the but... Yeah. Will be visible. Yeah. Will be probably visible. And uh, there's also... I, I'll, I'm not sure if I should speak about this, but there's one really juicy detail. Go ahead. Should I? Yes. Should I? Yes. Because it's disgusting. This is already demonetized already. It is. Likely. <laughs> it is disgusting. And we didn't discuss this in our podcast how he actually got it up. Um, so he, he wasn't ready to go? No, no. He needed to get it up. So, mm -hmm. uh, okay, well, I'm not sure if they asked for it. Probably nobody asked well, for it. Well, I'm this. sure they're here for something. Like, more people just showed up. Look. Okay. <laughs> so he actually <coughs> inserted his two 
fingers inside the donkey's vagina mm. and he started fingering the donkey while he was jerking off. And that's how he got hard. From pleasing the donkey while yes. the donkey... Yeah. I'm not sure if that's actually pleasing because if you saw the donkey's penis like this huge... Yeah, the it also the donkey looked like nothing was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like inserting a, a quarter of a toothpick into a woman. But you said the guy was like a baby's arm. <laughs> yeah, he like we saw the <laughs> we, yeah. we saw his penis and it was quite long. Brother was packing bigger yeah. than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah because I already saw it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. hey, Peter and Vlad, what was the ad? the atmosphere friendly from everyone at the festival or did you find people that were reluctant or even bothered by you being there mm, very friendly I think, yeah just friendly people very just very friendly, friendly people. very friendly very camera friendly people nobody yeah. threatening us everyone smiling everyone just uh, doing stupid shit in front of the camera mm. everybody was good uh tomas you're asking about the ayahuasca you have to stick stick around till the end when we hear about the next episode Uh, hi guys, I'd like to ask. Okay, should we discuss the uh-huh. color grade? Yes. Because yeah, 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 we had yeah. so many questions regarding color grading. So um actually the first four episodes in Colombia are the color graded, the first four episodes in Colombia are color graded, but they're not very vibrant. And that was that was my intention to make them look a bit eerie. Raw. And also, eerie. Oh, okay. Eerie and dark mm-hmm. and raw. Um but since so many people start pointing this pointing this out pointed it out mm-hmm. the episodes from uh from bolivia are more vibrant they're mm-hmm. they're more saturated so also bolivia i think is is more colorful than that, colombia it's it's a very colorful country so it would be a, a shame not that, to color that's what i wanted yeah. to ask you because i i really missed color doing the cholitas you missed color yes i really yeah. wanted that to be colorful it is so colorful no it's not it no. is so colorful you are just a dark looking guy no but really like i missed like well, more bright this, this is the advantage of putting the episodes on youtube first because by by um reading the comments especially if, if there are so many comments of the same kind we can avoid the mistake in the proper documentary so i'm actually glad if people point that out oh i don't We're think it's a mistake gonna, It's not also a mistake. My, fr- my friend is ready for all color grading because he's a professional color grader. Yeah, it's gonna be graded by a professional. Yeah, yeah by guy, professional yeah. because yeah. you cannot do it that that good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that you are and right for Colombia to uh, to make it. Yeah. You will have also sound. Yeah. yeah. You guys will have everything, yeah. right? Yeah. We need to have it because we we really want to to end up in a streaming platform. Yeah. That's gonna be amazing. If you need more water, it's no. there. Uh, hi, Vlad and Peter. I would like to ask, how many terabytes of footage did you have in total? That's a question for you. I think the total is 1.8, something like that. Terabytes? I don't know. Yeah, 1.8. You're in charge of that. I'm not sure. You were shooting raw footage or what type of footage mm, were you shooting? It was full HD. F- I think people don't know it. It's 4 to 2, 10 bits. Mm-hmm. So it's like more data... For coral grading. Mm-hmm. Very, g- very good. It. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about, but it's a, it's a good footage for, for post-production. A lot of data. With uh, probably the last question here. No, actually, that, that was it for the episode three. So now we can actually move to episode four. Guys in the chat... If you have any questions for episode four, this is it. The Actually, island. sorry to yeah. interrupt you, Go but ahead. episode four is what makes me extremely happy and has been making me extremely happy over the last 16 days because um, we have a lot of Slovak and Czech, Czech and Slovak people here that cannot see the content, how the content uh, is, is doing and performing on my international channel. It's not performing that well. Mm-hmm. Most people, they just want worst reviewed series. We'll we'll be back with the worst reviewed series. But in the last two years, we were not doing anything else apart from that, mostly. So they were so used to our goofy sketches and the worst reviewed hotels and worst reviewed restaurants that a lot of those subscribers that subscribed to my channel in the last two years, they just don't get this series. They just don't get this serious series 
and that's why it's not doing that well. But this episode, the fourth episode, has 1.6 million views in 16 days. I've never had those many views in so um, in any time. video in any video never in my life oh, wow. in 16 days. Who would have thought? Yeah, I would never think about that episode reaching that many views because it's not shocking. <laughs> it's to, just a feel good episode about a small island. To be honest, it's my least favorite from the yeah. series. Probably mine. Mm, no, I think it's it's done really well. But it's it, it's a feel good episode. Yeah. It's a feel good episode. My least favorite My least favorite is probably the first episode. The Tejo? Yeah. yeah. I like that more than the island. Yeah. And That's I'd, my least favorite episode. Just the island is <clears throat> I mean it was I I still love those episodes, but it's my least favorite episode. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ha, um yeah, so Nakvap. What does it mean? Naknap. It like yes. Not knap. Knap it's knap. so close, like very close, like it's tight, really close. tight, especially tight. in terms as, of as we like time. it tight. No, in terms of time, not sex. Aha, okay, yeah. okay, <laughs> okay. You're still back in the donkey fucking episode. Just turn the page. No, I'm already. Oh, on. sorry, I'm I already like, on. Yeah, okay, sorry. No, <laughs> We're so discussing tight things, so that's why I thought. From one of the things that you guys were talking about a lot is your experience traveling to the island. I know that. Both of you were miserable, and your snack suffered a <laughs> terrible fate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what happened there? You were quiet for a long time. So we're about traveling to to Ireland, yeah? Yeah, to Santa Cruz del Islote. So I think we we went to to um, yeah, airport. Yagi Pristo port. Uh, port. Moon is watching port. us. Look, Studio Moon. Oh, guys, say both of you say hi to Studio Moon. Hi, Studio hi. Moon. Hi, Moon. I'm gonna make him a moderator. Hi to Prague. He lives in Prague. You know that. You guys ever met? Yeah, yeah. Mm, I think no. I, I I met. He's a he's a hero. He drove from Prague for the podcast and left the same day. Oh. Just came for the podcast. So in his Audi. Yeah, Studio. Talk to your sister Clarissa. We need her. On the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> she put an English video today. You you saw my story. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. So look, Marek is saying yes. Island is a good episode, but between others, it is like yeah, boring. it's like boring. Yeah, yes, but because it's not shocking. I no? realized something uh, reading the comments because the episode has almost forty percent of American audience, which is great, mm. which is great. Mm-hmm. For but I think. Americans don't like curiosities and shocking and dramatic content. Dep- They just depends. like feel good content. That's what I um miss uh, shit. I, I forgot this word. Say deducted. It in uh-huh. d- d- deducted or inferred. No, uh, I don't even know how to say this in Or story. inferred or Brain deducted. Freeze. Brain freeze. Deducted is okay. Deducted. Yeah, yeah, that's what I deducted reading the comments. Yeah. So you need more feel good stuff, but actually Yeah, but it's like I'm <laughs> I I enjoy making episodes about curiosities and strange things more. And set the episode number seven is the most uh the strangest episode, the weirdest episode. So I I'm not sure in my opinion, it should be the most successful one, but seeing how the episodes perform, the shocking episodes, how they perform, I have no expectations anymore. Yeah, it's going to be a tricky one. So, yeah. uh, again, we're back to the traveling and the... Okay, so I think the, the road uh, with the boat takes like one hour with also this, I think, the worst weather. Ah, moon. We have a yeah. donation. Can you do me a favor and talk to Peter in Spanish? Well, I'm going to do you one better. Vlad, Matteo is going to talk in Spanish, and then I will talk to Spanish to both of them. Okay, so can I read my, my phrase? Sí. Uh, Martín, si por favor puedes hablar en español, uh, y tú también, Pedro. Sí. So, ¿Podemos hablar uh, es, uh, en español? Sí. ¿Está bien? Está bien, sí. Qué okay, bien. so Miguel... Uh, Em, empezar, no, empezar. Puedo empezar, no, sí. Puedo empezar. Sí. ¿Qué, ¿Qué has preparado tú en tu teléfono? 
This is for Moon. Moon wanted some Spanish. Rene Rano. <laughs> well, yeah, but I think this is the same phrase. No, no pero está bien. Yeah, you you can read it. <laughs> ¿Por qué no? <laughs> okay, okay. Pero no deberías usar la palabra discu discutir. Di no discutir, hablar. No. hablar. Sí, sí. Vamos a hablar en español. Hoy is tomorrow. No. no. Hoy is today. today. Hoy is today. Dines. Okay. Pedro está bien. Estoy bien, sí. Eh, estoy. ¿Qué diferencia? I, I don't know. Uh, ¿Cuál es la diferencia? ¿Cuál, ¿Qué, cuál ¿qué quieres diferencia? decir? ¿Qué quieres decir? Between Either, is it good? Uh, está bien, sí. Está, está bien. But, sí, so, está bien. But Macho just asked the most difficult thing in Spanish language. I believe the difference between ser and estar. And mm -hmm. you don't want to get there. Okay, we, okay. We, okay. We, <laughs> we will be here all day. But Moon pero, wanted some... Pero yes. mi español no está bien. Entiendo poquito, Moon. Spanish content coming soon. Okay. I was telling Moon that he should dub in, in Spanish. Uh, His videos. Yeah. Of course. Because it's animation. Mr. Beast style. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Thank you guys. I'm satisfied. Okay. He's satisfied. Sorry. Okay. So let's continue. So the... W w when, I, when I end... You're still in the port. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we are still in the port. So... I think the road takes about one hour with this boat. It was like, for me, the worst weather in Colombia because mm -hmm. the humidity was, I think, about 95%. The temperature was like 30, 38, 39, and also the rainy. So the rain was, it was really huge rain. So we need to, and there was no other option how you can go to the island, yeah? Yeah. But I think and the waves, yeah, <laughs> and the waves. How I, did you did you I throw up? Every no, 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 no. It no. was close for you. Close, yeah, close for me because I think every five seconds we have a really big, <laughs> big, big, big smash. No smash. Smash. So it, it's a smash. Wave. Yeah. Uh, or hit. Yeah, hit, uh, hit the wave. Nobody's smashing now. Yeah, <laughs> My question yeah, but only only two of us go to to this uh, it was just Santa Cruz del Islote. Just two of us. Because it's it was an issue to get boats, right? Yeah. It was an issue to find out when the boat leaves. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there was oh, okay. there yeah. was no schedule yeah. just no. <laughs> randomly. No. Yes. <laughs> on a Tuesday when the sun yeah. shines at yes. <laughs> this angle yes. it will show when up. When your shadow <laughs> is angled in 45 <laughs> degrees. You came to the island and actually you found a couple that was stuck there. Yes. So tell yes. us about this couple because we, we know they exist, but yeah. So it was uh, it was uh, an American couple. the The guy was one hundred percent American, and the girl was half American, half Colombian. So she was fluent in Spanish, and they were super bored. It was I think their second day in the island, and they were unable to leave that day. So they were like. I have no clue what... Because you cannot do anything in that <laughs> island. It's a small island. And how did you guys manage to get lost in the island? <laughs> because all the streets look the same. They are actual streets, yeah. like very short streets, but they all look the same. Yeah, we got lost several times. And what did you do with the couple? Well, we we saw that they were, they were extremely bored. And uh, we kind of took advantage of the girl. Yeah, we fucked her. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She's not following no. you on Instagram. Yeah, she is. Yeah, oh, she is. Yeah. No, no, I'm shout, kidding. Shout I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm uh, kidding. It was an opportunity for a joke because I, I said that we took advantage of her, which we did mm -hmm. because we fucked her. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We took advantage of, of her bilingual abilities and um, we found a, a guide in in the island and you know those islanders have a very strong accent like i usually understand spanish but i understood shit i'm surprised that you complain about the island and not about the bolivian people uh, we're gonna get to oh those. we're gonna get to it because we're gonna get to those this is st we're still in colombia oh god because uh, i had no issues with the island people because i think <sighs> With them, it's just about like, oh, they speak uh, like... Uh, and they uh, don't pronounce S. Yes. Like, como está, como está, di, yeah. estoy pecando. Instead of, estoy pescando, he said, yeah. estoy pecando, that's estoy pecando, estoy pecando, <laughs> estoy pescando, estoy pecando. Estoy pecando. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? 
So uh, we took advantage of, of her ability to speak both Spanish and English, and we were actually given a, a tour. Um, the, the guide was explaining the history and all the stuff, and I couldn't understand him, but she was translating. She was translating, and I was, uh, I was on fire. I had my uh, notepad uh, on my iPhone opened, and I was just, I was just um, writing all the information, which was a nice foundation of the entire episode. Mm -hmm. And I used it to make the, the the commentary the same day as we were filming. So that's what we did with the couple. Then we had a threesome. <laughs> and, should, you and you took I should advantage. And you took advantage with these jokes. He he had a blast, obviously. Yeah. And then he had a blast when you guys were fishing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, come on. For that hour for you that I was that close to, to die. I think that's the worst experience that you described so far. <laughs> yeah. In <laughs> Colombia, yeah, so far. So far. Actually there's a question. How were the knees? Doing after the episode fishing trip, a lot of pantanol and aloe vera. Yeah, a lot of pantanol, a lot of pantanol. But uh, how were you protecting yourself, and why did you go out at noon? Because it was the only time when the fisherman had time. He was, there was free. No other option. Yeah, because he said like it's either now or I don't have time. And later, we were there just for for two days. Yeah, no. Nope. But yeah. for me, this is a little bit of a pattern with you guys that. It seems that you have everything planned except how you need to dress or what you need to wear for the for where you are going. Yeah, that's true. Why? Well, I usually don't have problems with sunburn. It's mm-hmm. it's question yeah, for him. Yeah, it's question for But me. even in Bolivia when we will discuss that yeah, but gumaki I, gumaki in Bolivia For the salad, for example, we will discuss oh, yeah, it, but yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, understand yeah. it. Like, yeah. you guys shouldn't know, but we will get to it. All right. Because <laughs> we don't have a lot of space in, in our bags. That's so true. I think about 80% of, of my stuff was, was technique. Mm-hmm. My camera, microphones, and, and something like that. I, I think I had, like, six T-shirts. For, t- for two months? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is Me wrong too. with it? Me too. Six months, two t-shirts? No, two months, six t-shirts. I had two enough. months, yeah. I said That's six enough. months. <laughs> That's enough. But I think the problem with, with this particular situation was that it happened so fast. We found a fisherman. He was like, okay, here are your fins. We're going in five minutes. So we were like, oh, okay, okay. So we didn't have, we actually didn't think about, oh, should we dress properly? We were thinking only about the content. Yeah. We're not thinking about our physical Well being. Well I was like, yeah, exactly. just give me three minutes. I need to I need to bring my microphone, I need to bring uh, another ND filters and it was like that. But so you I can, cannot thinking about <laughs> my stuff. From his footage, which was not shown in the episode, every time that he came to the boat you're like <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> I was like, like, like that. you're about come to on, die. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I was really close. Die. What, so how did you what was your going through your mind when when you're like telling him let's let's go let's go and then he still wants to go to one more place I want to kill him <laughs> yeah, I really it, want to kill it him It was it was a huge contrast because every time I I showed up from the water and I was with sw- swimming <laughs> with the fish towards the uh, the boat I was shouting like Matt, turn on the camera. I caught a fish. It's incredible. This is so much fun. And he was like, please, <laughs> please can, can we, we go? Can we go? Yeah. It was I was like, like that. no, it was we're like not that. going. There are so many fish. It's so beautiful down there. Bye. <laughs> How many fish you caught? Four fish? Four. And I one crab. Fish and one crab. Yeah. Yeah. So We're still waiting for our crab. So what yeah. happened to the dinner? It was delicious. No, we gave the crap to the to the kitchen of our and of our hostel. And if, if they can cook yeah, for and us. And they said, oh, yeah, wow, that's a beautiful crab. We're going to cook it for you. And then we never saw the crab. Somebody ate it. Somebody. That, that yeah. didn't go to waste. Yeah. Yeah. And why didn't you ask? <laughs> we were shy. By the way, I ruined the shirt already. I'm sweating like a pig. Oh, it's <laughs> Don't worry <okay>. about that. <laughs> I'm sure people, some people will still want it, right? Yeah. You guys wouldn't mind a sweaty shirt from me, right? Yeah, favor is in American and favor in British. Oh, let's not get this started, I guys. Imagine the phrase from Hudo. What does it say? You can read it, Macho. Vlado sa výrazne zlepšil vo svojej angličtine. So my English is growing up. It is. Growing up. Yeah. 
I mean, it was the joke. Okay, <laughs> that's Come on. well. So you're improving also uh, in in your uh, comedy. Yeah. Wow. That's the next two, level. Two next two birds level. with one stone. Wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Me too. I don't have any questions, but I have to say that I'm just fascinated by the entire journey, and I love it. I, I think a lot yeah, of us too. are. Thank you so much, Melicious. Thank you Mark. very much. Uh, thank you very much. Look, a donation for much Thank you so thank, much. Thank you, thank you so you much. He needs a lot more. He needs a lot more pantano. Let me tell you that. See, I think you can see my glasses in here. Mm-hmm. Still? Yeah. That's from Bolivia. Still. <laughs> Uh, so we discussed the crap. Yeah, and the last thing on this episode, guys, is about your haircut. So, oh yeah, the uh, only other standout is your Tanzania haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mushroom haircut. Right, you look like a mongoloid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so what well, was different this time? Thank you, LPR. Actually, um, reading the comments on my international channel, all the people were like, "Oh, that haircut is dope." I love it. But I didn't know you were dissatisfied because it looked okay. No. No, it, it was just the okay. angle. No, it mean, was just it was the, the angle. angle. But come on, the guy was cutting your I hair know. with a Gillette. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. Um, like, uh, thinking about all the things and uh, the, the fact that we were on an island and he was 18 and mm-hmm. he had just one razor, it was very nice. That was probably the dopest haircut in the whole island. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe that's true. <laughs> anyway, uh, after the island, we went to Bolivia, and the first stop in Bolivia was a barber, because the haircut. No, it was in Colombia. In no, Cartagena. actually, that happened in Cartagena. Cartagena. Yes. So in the next episodes, I'm having a really sick haircut. Yeah. But only because we stopped in Cartagena. <laughs> yeah. Your hair grew enough for you to fix it. Because he actually and left you even bald at some places. I, I know here. Yeah. And uh, when I entered the barbershop in Cartagena, the barber was like, what the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> Who did that to you, my boy? Yes, yes. Who hurt you? <laughs> so, guys, yep. okay. we, we will answer the questions from Discord and from everything else near the end. So, we will answer them. And also, I have one special thing. During we, we were in Cartagena... Mm-hmm. You have also also uh, yeah sick, food poisoning yeah, yeah, food poisoning yeah, yeah in Cartagena and I'm going to to buy some some good stuff for him like banana mm-hmm. and 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 bread and he like banana yeah he yeah, like banana yeah. and one guy on the street just asked me oh are you from YouTube from Peter's <laughs> channel and I said come on how you know me <laughs> yeah I know Peter and I I said him yeah he's he, really near the, this place and he had a food poisoning and I cannot imagine how guy in Cartagena know me. For me it was like yeah I think we doing it well. yeah, that was super did cool. You, did yeah, you do something with cool. the guy or no? Yeah we had just a threesome. <laughs> Besides the threesome. <laughs> no, just one story and that's it. That's just it? Just one story yeah. So he didn't meet you? No no no, 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 no. no. I was having diarrhea. But you could see from your analytics where people are watching you right? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. And they can see you in Colombia, right? It's of course, of course. What are, what is your most significant following in Latin America? Which in country? Latin Ameri- I don't know in Latin America. It's it's the US and then UK, then uh, Germany, India, France. India Hungary. because of your feet. Yes. <coughs> and Pakistan as well mm-hmm. because of my feet and Hungary because of the the last episode of Wars reviewed, but mm-hmm. you're Latin a national America. hero there now. For closing that bar. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, he's making your country better. You need to do more exposés here. Why is Peter he- here looking so much like Charles oh, Leclerc? I get this. Like, so many people that see my videos for the first time, the unique viewers, especially in the, the Island episode, like, every third comment is like, oh, I didn't know Charles Leclerc is making documentaries now. Really? I take Who that is as that? A, He's a uh, F1 driver, racer, oh, Ferrari. Okay. I need to Google it. I yeah, think he looks. Uh, he kind of looks like me, to be honest. And I take that as a compliment. People are calling me the professor lately. Yeah. From yeah. Casa de Papel. Yeah. yeah, but he's higher than you. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's 1.8 meters, so that's 20 centimeters yeah. higher than taller. 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 Taller than both of you. Guys, that's Come enough on, for this is not a Peter. Hmm, actually no, oh. he's missing a neck too. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh. You can no, uh, yeah, they, they have Google, Google by the way. Yeah, yeah. you yeah, guys they, can Google yeah. it. Anyhow, guys, that's the end of episode uh four. Now we move on to episode five. If you have any questions about episode five, now is the time to do it. Or maybe on this photo, a little bit. Just a little bit. I don't know. Could be, I guess. Uh, you guys were going to to La Paz, mm-hmm. which is uh, is it the with the highest altitude yeah, in the that, world? Yeah. No, that's no? El Alto. El Alto is El even Alto. worse. Yeah, La Paz is like three point six kilometers on average, and El Alto is like almost four point two. So, how was your experience at that altitude? Because I, may, you've been at some elevations, but, but you me not not first time, first time in this altitude. It was really strange for me because i really want to breathe mm-hmm. and no more oxygen there was no more oxygen like you felt that you yeah. couldn't breathe wasn't that scary i would have been scared mm, i was just like a little bit scary because i'm breathing like a normal mm-hmm. and what it, it was not enough it was not enough if if you need to walk like like to to our hotel we need to walk about uh, the altitude i don't know how so, can I say so the, fe- the feeling uh, uphill Yeah, uphill, uphill. So the feeling is not is that you are getting tired and you cannot do physical stuff. Yeah, yeah, the physical stuff. It's not stuff. that you are struggling to breathe. You're also struggling, struggling to breathe, especially if you're going uphill and you're doing some sort of physical exercise or an, any kind of physical activity. And then there's also headache. So how did you solve? This, I just this want to, to breathe like, like uh, this Polish guy. Wim Hof. Oh, Wim Hof. I you just walk Dutch in. Dutch guy, not <laughs> Polish. He's not from Polish? Polish. Okay, so that's my bad. Netherlands. I just walking and breathing did like this. Did you try well, coca leaves? Yeah. Did it help? I think not. I've, it helped me. It helped me. The coca not me. I met a guy actually here in Slovakia that I, I that guy was was one of my former students who had coca leaves here in Slovakia, that he brought himself from Bolivia. Is that legal? No, it's yeah. absolutely okay. illegal. You, yeah. I don't know. But <laughs> but but the guy was the most innocent, like, mm-hmm. not into any of that, like, no drugs or anything. Yeah, yeah. But he says, yeah, I just brought him to make tea. Like, he had no <laughs> idea what, what he brought with himself. But he had no issues, and he had, like, huge bags of coca leaves. <laughs> and he would just Let's chew imagine. them. <laughs> so... What experience did did the guys have in La Paz with the people? My Spanish teacher told me a story where she talked to locals and they were super bothered with her speaking Aymaran on purpose. Yeah, truth be told, I think Bolivians may be the least friendly nation of Latin America. They're very proud to be mostly indigenous. Yeah, I think they that... They hate the Western world. Yeah. I think it's it's because you are white. In European, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They hate the Western world. Evo Morales, uh, when he sh- uh, he became a president, he, uh, he told like, okay, all these huge Western companies, fuck off, because they were they were really abusing Bolivian people. I told you the story of even the like one story with the water company that they the people couldn't afford to pay for water, so they would collect rainwater. And then the company went and made it illegal so that not even the rain c- could be collected. Yeah, they had to yeah. pay for the rain. Yeah. So that's how fudged it was for these local people. So I, I totally get it. But you think it would be different if, for example, if I went? I look. I know I Bolivian. Think, yes, it can be different. Mm, I'm not sure. No? You don't look Bolivian. But you don't uh, look Bolivian. I I'm, yeah, I don't look know. Like guy from I don't Latin know. America, I can so just put a little hat. I don't know. And they <laughs> would probably shout, "Ah, oh, es el profesor de casa yeah, de, de casa papel." De papel. Mm-hmm. But they don't have Netflix there yet. That's true. It's coming. Que- <laughs> case <laughs> is casa de papel. <laughs> What? Case is casa de papel. Money heist. Uh, Money heist. Ah, okay. Okay, so we dealt with the with the symptoms and now we get to the juicy part, which is the salar and the most annoyed that I was at the episode. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. At any of the episodes, because you guys are walking with your normal shoes, mm-hmm. and you even go the second day with just your normal shoes. 
Uh, yes, because the first day we came back to our hotel very late. And uh, Uyuni is a very small town. It's not a huge city. And we didn't have the opportunity to buy like other type of uh, footwear. And the next day we had to wake up at like 5 a.m. or something like that and ha- head back to go-, go back to Salar de Uyuni. So we just didn't have any opportunity. And we also thought even if we had the opportunity to buy some rubber shoes mm, we wouldn't we wouldn't do that we wouldn't do that because it was just a one one minute um scene that we had to shoot there so why why spend money on that we were already running out of our money when we were in uni and we actually ran out of our funds two weeks before i flew back to europe so you had no you had to beg again i had to beg yeah and suck yeah. some Uh, Actually, Matteo, you, fl- you found you found you found a sock under Peter's bed. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of of discussions on the internet to try to determine if that was a jizzy sock <laughs> or if okay. it was the salt. <laughs> <laughs> it was very crunchy, so we don't know. <laughs> no salt. It was no salt. It was not salt, it was right? Not salt, as it we was knew. Not salt. That's a proper jizzy sock. Why did you yeah, hire? It was a really good night. <laughs> really good night. That was a very good night because I finally had internet. That was actually the first night with internet after matcha. Like a proper yeah. internet for, yeah. for In videos. In such a small city? Uh, matcha is not a city. It's... Uh-huh. It's a really village. It's a village, very small yeah. village in in like uh, yeah, but they far don't away know from civilization. What is matcha. Oh, they don't know what matcha is yet. We, we will we'll, we'll, we'll discuss. We will that get to matcha. At why the end of this podcast? Why did you hire a guide? Because there was no other option to find our our place for for the entering filming uh, Bolivia. spots. The filming spot. W- what did I say? I have no clue, but it wasn't filming spots. Okay, so the filming spots. And also a lot of people told us you need to go there with, with the guide and also with the with the hotel made made of uh, of salt. salt and uh, also they told us if someone uh, lost in the Salar de Uyuni the police officer also taking these guys to to find it because it's it's just salt You can see on on the left and the right side mm-hmm. some mountains and that's it. It's just the salt. If you guys got lost in the island, you definitely get <laughs> yeah. lost in the yes. salad. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So it turns <laughs> So the guy that you guys hired <laughs> his first reaction was to buy a beer. Yeah. Yeah. That was not a red flag for you guys? No, because it was just like, you know, uh, just a beer just a beer one beer okay he seemed very friendly it was just a beer and then it was another beer and then at the beginning of Salar de Uni it was another beer and that was already a red flag but we were already in Salar de Uni and uh, the, the clock was ticking so we didn't have any more time to find no another other option to find another no guy. other option so we were like okay we're stuck here with a fucking alcoholic we need to figure out yeah we'll just you get out. your guide was trashed in the car yes yes <laughs> at the end he was just talking nonsense and he was playing some really annoying music you remember <laughs> yeah. that yeah. he was playing like music from the the early 24 uh, tw- how do you say like it's 80s 90s and then the 2000s, zero, zero, 2000s, 2000s. 2000s. yeah like Some For him, it was like, yeah, this is the newest song. Evanescence. In this I remember Evanescence. Nice. Yeah. Uh, show. <laughs> bring me up inside. <laughs> Don't sing it because we're gonna get oh, th- we're yeah, gonna get copyright. some copyright strike by 30 Terrible. seconds of you singing. Terrible music choice, and he was just talking nonsense. It didn't make sense. Did he get you home at least? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So But he wasn't driving. Okay. So. Terrible, absolutely terrible. But this, this, this is a cultural thing, and and I understand why you guys didn't catch it because here I think it would be normal if somebody has a beer on, on the way somewhere, right? But of course not when they're working, which yeah. was strange already. Yeah. But in Latin America, if this happens where somebody's getting a beer, it's it's not common. In, in Bolivia, I think it's very common because they have problems with alcoholism. We discussed it in the sixth episode. There is a mention. Did you? I don't know if it was you, Ma- Macho, or, or you, Peter, that mentioned that they, you guys recorded some footage that would get your channel deleted from YouTube. Uh, it's almost in every episode. Cockfighting, donkey fucking, then uh, 
Rituals, no, because we didn't capture anything uh, very dark. Yeah, but the next, we just discussed the it, next but episodes. seventh episode and eighth episode. It's even worse. Especially the seventh episode. Yeah. We're talking about dead people, really, like dead but dead people. But this time on camera. Somebody's asking. There are some questions here we, f- that we should check. <coughs> uh, if I've seen all the episodes in advance or I have to wait with all of us, because I remember you have mentioned something about the language correction he was doing for you guys. That's a good question for you. Well, that's a question for you. That's a question for you. Yeah, but I don't always see the episodes in advance. I see parts of the episodes. Yeah, parts, especially the interview parts, because mm-hmm. Miguel is helping us with this uh, with subtitling the the interviews. Stitul kami from Spanish to English. It's hard. I know, I know. It's absolutely hard because the the range of the trip that you took is you can imagine. Slovakia is a small country, and there are. Sometimes huge differences with the way people speak in Bratislava and yeah. in Vihor. Yes, of course. So imagine for Spanish and Latin yeah, America. Yeah. And I'm I'm listening I was fortunate enough that I grew up with a lot of nationalities around. So I can kind of understand the groups, but Bolivia especially oh. was a challenge because they speak Quechua, Aymara uh, and all these dialects and Man, I'm so sorry, especially for the sixth and seventh episode, because in the sixth episode you had to subtitle Don Eusebio. <laughs> I loved him, though. Did we, you? we will talk about Don okay, Eusebio, okay, not, not okay. yet. I, I, okay. I love Don Eusebio. Okay, okay. He would be a grandpa I would want. <laughs> 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 He was hilarious. Yeah, uh, and the next question is, uh, let's see. Hi, from Berno. I would like to ask how famous is this episode in the U.S.? Which one? The one we're talking about with the uh, ch- Cholitas. Terrible, terrible numbers. All the episodes are doing terribly, uh, uh, except the fourth episode, which is performing. It has the best performance ever. It has almost 1.6 million views in 16 days, which is bringing a lot of subscribers, a lot of attention. But the other episodes, not so well. Also, the donkey fucking episode is doing pretty well, like 300k mm-hmm. almost. But the other ones, nah. Effie's asking, Salar is used for GPS calibration. Why would not be enough to to not use GPS there? It wasn't Beca- working? No. Yeah, but generally, yeah, it worked. But you cannot go just straight because there is also a lakes. So let's imagine if you go like 50 kilometers per hour and just one lake is, is in front of you. There are holes And if you're going 100 kilometers per hour and you you don't know there's a hole, you you cannot spot the mm-hmm. spot the hole so fast. So imagine you're you're going 100 kilometers per hour so fast, and then the, the tire hits the hole. Mm-hmm. So that that's an accident, and mm-hmm. we can you injure ourselves or and die. Also, uh, our guys and the the guides know us. those holes. Uh huh. And he knew, even though he was yeah. trash. Yes, yes, yes. And he also asked. Uh, uh, us if we have something to repair a car. Really? Some stuff. Yeah, oh, he okay. asked. Okay. And I told him, yeah, we have it in our trunk. <laughs> During this episode, we also, we're getting now to the more juicy stuff. Uh, the solar was interesting, but solar. But now I want to talk about caldo de cardan. <laughs> <laughs> pipik soup. Yes. Po- uh, pipik polioka or yes. pipikova polioka. Yes. <clears throat> You say in the episode that it was delicious. You're like, "Mm, it's delicious. But then you said you didn't like it. No, I loved it. You loved the pipi goba soup? Loved it. It was the best. You you didn't like the part of the penis. Yeah, I didn't like the the penis. Pohlavni ud. Yes, that was was terrible. The soup was good. (laughs) But the soup itself was delicious. It was our favorite meal and also our motivation. We were dreaming when we were far away from civilization, far away from big cities where they prepare this soup, we were dreaming of returning to those cities. We were so <coughs> eager to come back for the soup. We had What the kind soup, of like soup? The, the bull penis soup. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be a great TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so we had the soup like six times. Yeah, six times. The last day. What? So- the six times yeah, the yeah, dick yeah. soup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you also? Yeah. yeah it was I so think delicious. About five times because you have one more for filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you like Dorshkova normally, for no. example? No, I don't like So Dershkova. how do you not like Dorshkova, but you like... 
pipikova because soup. It's, it's, polioka. it's so different. Some, some kind like like pho without the part yeah. of the penis. Yes, it's it, it tastes like yeah, pho. It's, it's like a really a very strong, strong broth. I don't like pho. Well, you wouldn't enjoy the dick. Probably so. not. I it's such a strong flavor of beef. But this is very yeah. strong. It's a very strong broth. So this uh, caldo de cardan is not not for me for sure. But I know that you guys mentioned that uh, the, the the guy was actually pretty happy that you were there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. What Edgar. and that you increased his sales how? I'm not sure if we actually increased his sales. Okay, maybe like we of course we we were there six times, but <laughs> he was happy that because we're enjoying this soup. Some two foreigners are enjoying this curious soup. I'm I don't think He ever had foreigners in that restaurant. Mm-hmm. It, it was a small restaurant in the outskirts of La Paz. He, I, I, he was genuinely happy to see two white guys um, enjoying that that art. It, for him, it was art. You could see that it was art. The 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 gastronomy for him, it was art, yeah. and we were truly appreciative of of his art. Did you ever take it to go in a plastic no, bag? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> But man, maybe more people will want to try the pipicoa polioka. <clears throat> yeah, so how was the expectation that you had what about training with the Cholitas versus the reality? Well, I didn't expect to be thrown around like a second. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know that you were not feeling well. It looked so fun yeah. and yeah. Altitude sickness. Yeah. It was terrible. It was, I never thought that just being thrown around, I didn't do much. I was just thrown around. I didn't do any push-ups or squats or something. I was just thrown around and then I did some kotramelets. How do you say when you... Cartwheels. Cartwheels, cartwheels. And it fucked me up, man. It fucked. Can I curse? In Slovak. Strašne ma to odjebalo. Strašne ma to Did any of the cholitas get touchy with you or flirt with you or touch your peepee when you I wouldn't say touchy but like when I was introducing myself I think you can see it in the video they're yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> but most of them had the hat up because you were saying that how it's if it's straight they're married yeah yes if it's on the left side uh it's she's, she's single, single and right and side right widow. widow looking to mingle yeah yeah, yeah. but We're going to discuss my romantic relationship with uh with Bolivian women when we were going to discuss the seventh episode cause And six not No not six, six. Okay. not sixth the seventh when we're going to have give them like a sneak peek Oh what's going to happen And yes. you you didn't have any Cholita fans No I'm su- I'm surprised that you were not popular there because you're white and tall What, What happened <laughs> <laughs> You're not ugly. <laughs> You're not ugly for sure. If I can score, you can score. So you, it was not a good experience for you. No. What about watching it? Yeah, that was entertaining as hell. That was really enter- I thought like, come on, it's wrestling. Yeah, everyone knows it's fake. I would never go to a wrestling show. But it was fucking entertaining. Maybe because there were parts that were probably not fake. Because one of the girls injured herself. She injured her arm. She had like the... How do you say that thing? I don't even know how to the say it. The sling. The sling at, at the end of the show. And at the end, at the very end, when the, uh, when male wrestlers come to the scene again. <laughs> Roman Drevo. Roman Drevo. <laughs> Roman, I will send it to you because this guy sent it to me. Uncensored. I'll, I'll send it to you <laughs> as well. <laughs> you're get, you're gonna have an abundance of clips to masturbate to. <laughs> It's gonna be a great crunchy sock. <laughs> crunchy <laughs> <the>, sock. For <laughs> <Yeah. the laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. No, I just, don't worry, I just don't worry. cracked me up. Uh, I just lost my thought. I have no clue what I was talking about. Uh, about the uh, it was this girl had a sling and she was still fighting. Yeah, and <laughs> at the end when male wrestlers come to the scene again, there was blood. There was blood. They, you, you remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was blood inside the ring, so it wasn't that fake. Maybe that's why I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. When when it comes to the wrestling, can I ask, what did the cholita smell like? 
they don't smell like uh, they they were not um, perfume sudor. How do you say sweat. sweat? They're not sweaty. They don't. They didn't have any special smell. I don't remember. There's no perfume. I was, I was probably too concerned with my health. <laughs> yes. The last thing I want to ask about this episode is, you're halfway across the world mm-hmm. in a country that. It is secluded because Bolivians naturally don't travel. I think they travel even less than Americans. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Amongst indigenous people, and somehow you encounter the song Du Brauka by oh. Hafner. <laughs> Man. <sighs> Tell us that story because that just blew my mind. Me too. You can try. Tell it. In Spanish? In Spanish, <laughs> or in Quechua. In Quechua, or Misquito. <laughs> <laughs> I think Cholitas would destroy John Cena. I think so, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So we filmed the part of Cholitas wrestling in uh, El Alto. And uh, the girl who... I don't know how can I say in English. Uh, should, no, ta pani čo to vlastne... The, the the woman that was organizing Organize, yeah, the, the organized organizer. woman it's just the lady just, in the interviews yeah. yeah yeah just ask us oh guys where are you from and we just thought yeah we are from Slovakia and after this phrase he's like oh daj si piko daj si piko pojeti karta and we were like oh, what the like fuck like what the hell just what? happened yeah well this is the lady that always finished with the same po or no no Yeah. No? The, no? no? You you tell me no? she's Argentinian, but I swear that she doesn't sound one bit Argentinian. Maybe because she has been living in Bolivia for probably like 25 yeah, years. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Like that. But that that was her? Yeah. Yes. So yes. she yes. she was yes. a yes. woman yes. of her, culture. That was her. Yes. Yes, a, a woman of culture. Man, can you imagine that? A like pico in song. In Bolivia, Dai si pico, dai si pico poi ti carta. I was addicted to that song when I was like 15, 16 years old. And you understand what is it? Yes, of course. But yeah. this this reminds me, again, I mentioned Roman Konya who was here last week. Mm-hmm. He, t- he told me he was in Guatemala and he was in one of the islands in a remote area. And he comes across a guy and he looks at him. Socks, sandals. And you can guess the rest. Yeah, of course. Czech, Czech guy, guy in the middle of, uh, of Guatemala. <laughs> Actually, there's a funny story. When I was um, when I was uh, in Senegal, in northern Senegal, in a in a town near the border with Mauritania, um, I was staying in a in a very small and dirty uh, hostel, like with everywhere. With nobody, well, yeah, <laughs> with with nobody, with no guests, and there was just like Senegalese people. And suddenly, out of nowhere, when I was going to take a shower. I just heard Milan et is totally vochtsal which means like Milan did you pee here did you pee all over the place check couple out of nowhere <laughs> Milan et is totally vochtsal were they wearing sandalki uh, yes of okay, course okay of, of course, course. then of course. they were confirmed checks yeah what a funny thing man what a funny thing yeah. we're moving on to our last episode for today but you guys feeling okay still yeah Yeah. I'll so have some more water. Yeah, have some more water. We're going to be discussing the last episode. Then we will quickly look through the questions on Instagram and Discord. So we will get to them. Uh, actually, uh, Vlad, can you read the question there from Sonia? Uh, yeah, let me try. Bude niekedy dostupná tá epizoda s kohutím zápasom? Chápem to tak, že asi nevyblúrovaná. Tak bude... Nie, ja to chápem tak, že sa k nej nevie dostať, pretože d- uh, age restricted a demonetizovaná. Aha, takto. Môžem aj po slovensky? Môžeš, teraz? hej. hej. Uh, je to kvôli tomu, že proste YouTube je YouTube a YouTube si myslí, že je tam niečo hrozné, aj keď všetko hrozné je vycenzurované. Budeš sa musieť prihlásiť na, na založiť si Google účet a pravdepodobne tam nahrať svoj občiansky, inak to nejde, aby Google zistil, že máš nad 18 rokov a vtedy si to môžeš pozrieť. Alebo možno cez niekoho. Že ak máš niekoho, kto už má ten účet a má nad 18, tak, tak to pôjde. Ale inak v podstate iná možnosť nie je. Bohužiaľ. Alebo potom počkať. Alebo potom počkať na dokument. Áno, v dokumente bude všetko nevycenzurované. How long do you expect it to be? Not sure. Two hours? Sure. 
Probably between 90 minutes and two hours. That's I'm a just sweet still spot. thinking about have three episodes. Or maybe three episodes, like 45, 345. Yeah. We don't, we don't know. One from Colombia, one from Bolivia, and one from the third um, country. Yeah. If it if it goes to Netflix, can you have me in the background somewhere so I can of get course. an IMDb yeah. credit? Of course. Yeah, of I need course. an IMDb yeah. credit. Of you course, please. It. You'll get that. D- d- can you digitally put me like next to no, the donkey? No, I told you. Yeah. If we <laughs> ever win an Oscar, you're gonna be the first one thanking. You're gonna thank God first, and then Miguel. Then Miguel, yeah. 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 Let's continue, guys. Who is? Pa- uh, if you have questions about episode six, now is your time. Remember, stick around because we're gonna talk about. Episode 7, which will blow your freaking mind. And we'll answer questions from Instagram and Discord. And we'll also talk about our special, special project in February that you're going to want to listen to. Who is Pachamama? It's one of uh, Bolivian gods. It's the main goddess. Yeah, the main god. So if you had to describe what she does or what is her domain. Mother Earth. It's Earth. It's basically Earth. The Earth that... uh, Thanks to which we grow our food, mm-hmm. uh, the earth that um, that we walk on that gives us so many gifts, uh, the earth the 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 earth that needs our blood to be happy. And who is Ekeko, and why is noon on Thursday so special for him? I have no clue why that particular time, but Ekeko is the god of luck and happiness, and it's really strange because they have. Almost every Bolivian household has a statue of Ekeko and they give him cigarettes. It's a shame because I, I would have asked you to bring me a, a tiny Ekeko. He it, looks funny. It, he is fun. He's fun. He's the he's like um in in mythology in I think uh, uh Greek mythology there was this god of fun and wine Dionysus. Uh, uh, Dionysus. Not L- Loki? Dionys- uh, or no, that's, 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 Nord- that's Nordic. Nordic. Okay. That's Nordic. Yeah. But it's it's basically the same. I think each uh, religion or something like that that um, needs a god of fun. So Ekeko is the one in Bolivia. They have it in Guatemala as well, or Mexico. Yes, they have it in Guatemala and the islands yeah. as well. Yeah, Do, Don yeah. something, it's called. Yes, yes, it yeah. starts with S. I, I, I heard about don't that. Don Sebastian, read about it. I don't know. Yeah, but we know, we know you don't have it if you're a single woman. Because Ekeko can take you. That's true. In her bag? That's true. Ekeko likes single women. Yes, yeah. yes. And what a filthy, filthy boy, Ekeko. <laughs> <laughs> you... <clears throat> One of the interesting things for me when you guys were dealing with all the rituals is how they incorporate Jesus and Christian themes into the rituals. That's my problem. I That's don't know. A good I don't question, know how it works. And I have no clue. Um, and it was really strange when uh, when um, uh, Don Eusebio mm-hmm. was doing the Mesa. Yes. While he was. Uh, Speaking gibberish in Aymara. He wasn't gibberish. He wasn't gibberish. <laughs> when, when he was speaking in Aymara or... Ke- I think it was Aymara Could or Quechua. Or one of the two. One yes. of the two. They must have more than 20 we, languages. We, <laughs> we heard that he was saying like, Corazón de Jesús. Santa Maria Jesús. Exactly. Um, so he was basically mixing two religions. I, so I wonder if it's really something similar to what happened, for example, in Haiti and with the black slaves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where they used the uh, Christian symbols and saints, and they put the voodoo gods. Mm-hmm. They represented voodoo gods. So I don't know. It could be because the Spanish were oppressing them to mm-hmm. to pick up yeah. the, the customs, yeah. right? So, but also in the church, uh, there was a keko there. The church, yeah, no, no a keko. <laughs> there is a pachamama and Jesus in the church. Yeah. So this is what I was asking: if pachamama had some way of looking if there is an official yeah, oh you can google that i think there there is a way of looking for pachamama yeah, but, but uh, like there are so lady. many of them Th- there are so many of them there's Ooh. not one look there's a donation from adroki thank you adroki sk but look at the when they donate they have yanoshik ah, okay <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah. this is the pachamama oh, pachamama you looks see, old you lady see, you see it's it, like it uh, looks a like person, gaia like lady, personification yeah. of of the soil and earth it looks like gaia What's that? Gaia is Mother Earth, Earth, okay. Planet Earth. It's okay. from Greek mythology. Okay, okay. So, and in the Gaia theory, we are parasites. Humans are parasites right. to Earth, and it makes sense. Okay, yeah. Jakub Malina, welcome. Okay, okay, 
papa nombró a la Pachamama en la... Oh, he mentioned Pachamama during uh, Mass. So I guess he's recognizing the okay. Pachamama and Mother Earth could be maybe Mary as well. <coughs> you, uh, this is probably the m- most interesting story in the whole trip and, and why we have to exercise the studio after this is done. <laughs> <laughs> and probably I have to burn that chair. <laughs> <laughs> Because you, <coughs> and actually I'm, it's kind of sad for me to be very honest. Because it seemed so cool to have like with that with that guy I Sergio. Know, I know, especially in Lake Titicaca. So uh, tell the story, uh, both of you. I also want to hear your point because I know you were pissed and you are still pissed. I yeah. see, I see it in your just eyes. Just a little bit. Just <laughs> yeah, a little he's bit. still pissed. <laughs> I'll start, and you can. When we get to your part, you can continue. continue. Okay. Uh, so we were supposed to film with a with an actual shaman named Sergio. But before filming, Sergio invited us um, to his apartment in La Paz to talk. Mm -hmm. He wanted to see and know our our intentions. And um, Martin didn't go to to his apartment because he had food poisoning. He felt sick. So I went there with, uh, with our helper and translator, Alba. Don't you think it's so suspicious that when you are supposed to go visit... Sergio, he gets sick. Speaking of the devil. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, thank so you guys. Martin didn't joking. go. <laughs> Martin didn't go. That would be a clash. Because maybe once he entered the place, uh, the demon yeah, would come exactly, out. And, like, exactly. Well, that would have S- been good t- <laughs> YouTube video. <laughs> I hate you guys. Exercising blood. <laughs> <laughs> so, I. Um uh I came to his apartment and that apartment was one hell of a place. Yeah, tell it, us it was tell us about that. It was full of stuffed vultures, huge stuffed vultures and a lot of skulls. It But human skulls? I have no clue probably. It looked human. Yeah. yeah. All Hunting. kinds of skulls, <coughs> like dozens of skulls, probably like 40, 50 skulls in that apartment. Creepy. And um, the first thing that you noticed was was the smell of incense. Inc- incest. Incest, 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 not incest. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different uh, that, that's, series. That's him putting the words <laughs> into my brain. <laughs> that's a devil working on. Yeah. <laughs> so incense sticks, very strong um, aroma, and uh, so we sat down in his kitchen, and this Sergio guy was so. Um, I'm not sure how do you how can you describe this this man? I know you were very uncomfortable, but you didn't know if positively or yeah, I still don't know to this day if it was a positive or negative experience. literally your Poland you would pull yeah. back he <clears throat> was smoking cigarettes all the time, and as he was inhaling, it took him four seconds to inhale the cigarette it was like <sighs> and just just constantly watching. Me. That sounds proper our, our Eastern friend, European. Yeah. And <laughs> Alba was the, the, the translator was sitting right next to me and she was his friend, but he never looked at her. He was constantly looking at me, asking questions. What are our intentions? Why do we want to film the ritual? Who's gonna film the ritual? Blah blah blah. So I explained everything. And then he said, Okay, I may do it with you guys, but I need to ask the gods if they allow me to film it with you. And then he asked me for my date of birth, the place of birth and the time of birth. And he also asked for Martin's information, the same information. So I gave him all the information. I I, I uh, wrote to Martin, when were you born, at what time? And L- he said... Let's imagine, I was in my room and Peter Peter just wrote me a message. I need to know your birth date and... Like, Next okay. thing you know, your account is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was social engineering, like mm, yeah, yeah, these yeah, yeah, fools yeah. are giving yeah. <laughs> Rodney cheese <law. laughs> Okay, now the the credit cards, please. All right, and uh, then then uh, he said, like, okay, thank you very much. I'll ask my gods, and I let I'll let you know. And then in about I don't know a week, the gods replied. Now it's your turn. Before he gives okay. us his reply, uh, there's at uh, let's see, somebody asked, why can't I send donate from Denmark, Julian? 
Uh, I don't know, but don't worry about it. It's enough that you're here watching and you subscribe. Thank you so much for your intention. You can become a member of the channel if you want. That's a good, uh, good way. We're going to have part two of this podcast with the later episodes, so you definitely want to stick around. Okay, so where did you end? So uh, the so gods replied. Ah, okay, the so, gods the replied. Ga- so the gods replied, but they replied something like, uh, yeah, Peter, you're okay, we can film it with you. But there is something bad with your cameraman. <laughs> and I was like, oh, come on, what is wrong with something me? Something bad. And and Peter told me, you have something really bad in you and you need to do some more rituals to be to be clear and open minded for for the main ritual. And I was like, come on, why why I need to do something like that? What what is wrong with me? I want to be good with, with everyone and Why it's me every time it, it, it's you, not me. I'm a good guy. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm, I'm never a bad <laughs> guy. But deep just, down, deep down. If I had to pick somebody to have the devil in them is you. <laughs> But l- let's imagine how you feel if someone who, who never see you told about you you're really bad. You're really bad. I think it was made me just show. That he wanted to yeah, but we charge want to you. Film. Was he gonna we charge to you for the no, healing? No, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. So he was legit. He didn't want any money for nothing. And can I ask a question? Like maybe this seem may seem like a bit rude, but why didn't you just do it without Macho? Because without you, Macho, how could we do it? Just you. You shot video before alone. Yeah, but uh, I would need to travel. No, that. I would need him because this is a serious documentary and that It would be, be like, like a vlo- vlo- vloggy mm-hmm. style. Mm-mm. That would not be possible. No, at that all. That would not be possible. I, I would it, need him for the video. But it was oh. also like we we know him about one hour and we need to go with this no guy somewhere to Titicaca. That would like, have been so amazing though. I <laughs> it would. It would. Yeah, but, but he didn't want But I understand as well. But also, good thing you yeah, didn't go. At the, at the end of, of the Bolivia, we told to each other, we also don't have a time for it. Because it was after we, we yeah. came back from Salar de Uyun. Actually, for this part with Sergio, since he set the date, he was such a busy guy. Mm. He set the date, and the only possible date would be a day before our flight to, to the last country. So we would need to wake up really early... Do a couple of rituals on the way to Titicaca with the and we would need to travel by a bus because mm. he specifically asked for a bus for because some of fucking me. reason. Yeah, he probably didn't want to be only with the devil. With the devil, uh, well, can you blame him? Yes, <laughs> of course. And then film the ritual in Titicaca and then somehow get back to La Paz, which is quite far away, mm. and then go to the airport. So it was very tight. It was very, very tight. Mm. But the, it, it that w- was also one of the reasons. It would have been a very interesting episode. But, I know. But then in Titicaca, you have to worry about the thing that goes in your... I, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe for the future. Yeah. We'll, we'll come back. We'll come And back. And I also need to pray. We'll Or come back with you. You need, we, you need to get the devil out of you. Because Imagine I an episode. <laughs> Vlad getting the devil out of him. I heard we'll that... We'll back. Did you hear that they're filming a... They're writing the script for the next Conjuring movie and they really? want to write his life oh, story okay. oh, yeah, yeah, with yeah, Annabelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but all jokes aside, yeah, I, I can imagine what a pain in the ass. But my concern, and this is a real concern because I take these kind of things seriously, like I watch a lot of horror mm-hmm. and it kind of drives my mind. But did you take the rituals seriously? Or were you in a way like in disbelief or mocking these things? Because I'm always afraid of of messing with mm-hmm, these mm-hmm. energies that yeah, we yeah, don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but the, which one? All of them. Um, well, uh, we started with the coca leaves, which yeah. in my opinion okay. were, mm, nah, that's just like you pay some dollars or some bolivianos to the to the lady and she tells you whatever. She didn't know anything. She told us that we're going to be fine in our next adventures. You have to be careful about being cold. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And by the way, matcha is not so cold, but okay. 
I don't know. But why were you telling people that your name was Peter instead of just saying Pedro? I don't know. It was so weird. I don't know. And uh, Don Eusebio told me Peter. <laughs> Peter. Peter. <laughs> Don Eusebio. Peter. He's the highlight, Don Eusebio. And uh, so at that time, I was like, okay, this is some bullshit. I don't. But after meeting Sergio, I I started to believe this shit. I really started to believe in these otherworldly powers and spiritual things that may be around these Bolivian people because I could sense something there in that apartment. I re- I don't know if it was just the the pohlat, the stare mm-hmm. that he was giving me all the time, but I could sense something and I I I stopped messing around with these things. So Before, you were initially. Yeah, we were like, ah, this is bullshit. But then I changed I truly changed my mind after experience with Sergio. Yeah, because I imagine doing these rituals could have a negative effect if you Yeah. Uh so and Adroki SK, thank you for becoming an A1 English level member. And Julian did send us some DKK. Forty five DKK. So so how many Ooh. how how much is that in real money? Hey Siri. No, it's uh okay, Google. How much is 45 Danish crowns in euros? Childless. Six euros and five cents. Six euros and five cents. Thank, Thank you. you, Julian. Big spender here. Big spender. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, so now, yeah, go ahead. It was also a question for me? or Yes, of course. Okay, so for me, it was like if someone wants your money to do this ritual it's a fake because you you want to go there for a ritual not for a money but in a Sergio Peter told me he don't want a money so it was like okay it can be some kind of true but yeah so i i believe in god so i i believe in some some this kind of some higher power yeah some higher power but i'm okay but i think generally if you said the ritual automatically it's meaning something bad and the ritual is not bad because if you go to the church there is still some kind of ritual how of they give you give you shit or drink and something like that so it's kind of ritual so the ritual is not bad generally it's not bad but peter told me where where this guy living and he's living in really big Skyscraper. house yeah Mm. With Sergio. a lot mm-hmm. of this stuff. Well, he's yes. the big shaman. Right? He's the yeah, main shaman in many rituals. Yeah, you said yes. he doing this for a living. So a lot of people need to give him money mm-hmm. for this kind of ritual. So for me, there is a part where it's true. I believe in with with this part, mm. but it's. Sti- I think I'm not sure. I think there is still still kind of business. Yeah, for sure. and I think the for the foreigners. I think you But guys had the right approach that I it's think not Peter that is not okay with my no? answers. No, I'm I'm just reading a very interesting question. So what w- what if Sergio wanted to offer you to Pachamama <laughs> <laughs> to build to Sorry. for yeah. his house to be yeah. straight? Yes, yeah, to build <laughs> yes. a house. <laughs> that would have been quite oh, the and offering. If the devil himself would be sacrificed, that house would, would never be, fall. Would never yeah. fall. Yeah. Yeah, would never. <laughs> But Yeah, I think that you guys approached it right that uh you don't have to believe, just uh take it with respect, right? Yes, because yes, uh yeah. yes, yes. Because we have our rituals, they have their rituals we gotta meet. Yeah. No, oh, sorry, sorry. But for me the ritual is not bad. So Yeah, I, I think you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you mean. But now I want to shift to Don Eusebio, mm-hmm. which Can one of like this? Sorry. One one of my yeah. favorite yeah, yeah, yeah. uh Characters, not characters. Oh, Miroslav Turkek. <laughs> 420. What a random Smoke number. Weed every day. <laughs> That was AI generated number. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. If it's setting you want to do it. Pacha mama. <laughs> Thanks, Effie, for the laugh. So, how, what was your impression of Don Eusebio? Did He comes across as a very nice gentleman. Yeah, he was very nice. He was actually one of the probably the only yatiri that mm-hmm. was willing to be interviewed because all the yatiris are like, "No, no, no, get mm-hmm. the camera out of my face." Mm-hmm. 
even the old lady with the coca leaves, she didn't want to be interviewed. That's but, why she looked kind of pissed. Yeah, yeah. She, I don't know. But Don Eusebio, exactly like you said, he struck me as a as a likable grandpa. Like a likable grandpa, um, I think, I think he knew something about elephant cemeteries yeah. and he also knew a lot about the the sacrifices of living people mm-hmm. but he simply didn't want to talk about it in front of the camera i also got the same feeling yes. to me eusebio initially and i have to be very honest i judged him as as uneducated and and maybe of a lower iq mm-hmm. but as i got to know him through the interviews because actually i i had more than what people saw in yes, the episode yes, with full yes. interviews you could see that he was so careful about the way that he replied yeah, questions yeah, exactly. it's like he went through media training exactly pr training yeah yes you're absolutely right i and you were not there you saw the entire interview but you were still not there and we could both sense like man this guy knows these things but there was no way to squeeze it from him there was just no way he he was he did give you a little bit he said that he's heard it in the yeah, past yeah yeah that it happens but he's never seen it yeah it's and it, we were actually there with our friend alba inside that room and if she wasn't there we would get no answer from she was so careful with those questions she actually um ask those questions i asked the, the the normal questions the about pachamama but those questions about the sacrifices and elephant cemeteries she was there to carefully ask them because it's a such it's such a taboo and controversial topic you need to play with words mm. when you when you ask these questions and he was ready for that he didn't let you get anything know, so again I very know. impressive i know um we didn't mention you you briefly showed max mm-hmm. in the cementerio part yeah but how was he involved in this whole thing and was he really helpful for you well uh we were actually um accompanied throughout the whole bolivian experience by our friend alba we never showed her because she didn't want to be shown in the videos but she was such an angel such an angel that girl and uh she saw that we didn't get any answers about the elephant cemeteries and the sacrifices from Don Eusebio. So we asked, like, do you know someone who's willing to shed some light into this in front of a camera? And she was a city uh, tour guide, and uh, but she didn't want to be interviewed. Mm-hmm. So she came up with the idea of, of uh, asking uh, Max. And he was the only one. She actually reached to like five of her friends that could speak at least some English to be interviewed in front of a in a, front of a camera and four of them said no. And Max w- was like, "Okay, uh, Max all actually has a YouTube channel himself, so uh he kind of understood that we're doing some sort of creation here and he was willing to help." So thank God that uh he was there. He that. was there for you guys. Yeah. Um Our last official question from my side, then we'll jump to Instagram quickly. Are you guys still okay? Or yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, and it's for you, Matthew, about describing the whole... Because you describe it really nicely in your own podcast, by the way, guys. If you guys want to see the Slovak version, and there's more stuff than we will discuss here, because more episodes. Uh, uh, Matthew, his YouTube channel, Vlad, has the behind the scenes. And uh, You mentioned there about the whole bartering process with the elefante cementerio de elefante and the big companies yeah yeah one when more they're time? building a building in english of course okay huh. so uh Th- thanks andre generally in bolivia with this ritual work like this if you are father of of men and family i can say it like this and you want to to build uh, a house for your family you need to do this this ritual it's called mesa yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah so or misa or this or uh, wachta uh, as well wachta. misa mesa or wachta so we need to do a ritual it's called machta wachta 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 oh fuck there's so a lot of you questions you have a lot of things in in this ritual you have a uh it's not living lama how you can say lama lama fetus lama fetus yeah. lama fetus some 
some coca leaves, uh, some money, some small stuff like something like that. Okay. But if you want to build something bigger, like like two stars hotels or school or something like that, some governmental building, <laughs> not governmental building, not government not yet. Building? Okay. Uh, you need oh, sorry, to. Yeah. You need to. I know where you're getting. Bring something more for Pachamama to to building be a good and good for people and be like normal. You need to sacrifice the living llama, the big one. The living llama, also with the other stuff, but but the big living llama. But if you want to build something really bigger, like government or five star hotel, you need to sacrifice something more because Pachamama want to uh, want uh, uh, human blood mm-hmm. for sacrifice. So you need to sacrifice the living people. So these guys who want to who want to build it go to this elephant cemetery and asking these people oh okay i see you you want to you want to sacrifice your, no sacrifice uh you want you to w- kill you yourself want, you want to be sacrificed you, you want to be sacrificed mm-hmm. by alcohol so mm-hmm. if you want to sacrifice you for you our mean building, a- intoxicated by alcohol yeah intoxicated yeah, yeah, by alcohol so let's go to sacrifice for our building and mm-hmm. i give you your family some money or your, your friends if you it you you go the next day to to this place where the building with uh, will stand up and they give you give you some alcohol they give you some some food some sometimes pay you uh not bitch it's a, a prostitute, yeah, a prostitute. A prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for the word <laughs> and uh giving you this uh, 96% percent of alcohol and after some some hours if you have a lot of alcohol you're going to be really intoxicated so for this body it's like your your brain need to to turn turn off mm. to there is a still chance to to you can survive survive and after that they give you uh, they put you to to the hole mm-hmm. and put a uh, dirt. Them, dirt yeah dirt on you and while you are still breathing Uh I don't know how can I say in English. Udusica. You choke. Choke. You choke. You suffocate. Suffocate. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Choke yeah. is when oh sorry. So yeah. you are That's still alive. Well, you could choke actually. So yeah. You are still alive, but it's really so in every building, big building. There is there should be somebody yeah. there, right? Somebody there. Uh, they uh Don Eusebio said that it's Am I explained good? Yes. Something missing. Yeah, yeah not yeah. by English, but yeah, I think you know what I don't know. Yeah, Savio says they have I to be the it. it has to be a man because it has to be standing straight. That's how they want the building, right? Yes. To yes. avoid tragedies and things exactly. like this. Exactly. Good. Let's get to the last part of the podcast, guys. Thank you to Cynthia for donating that sweet, sweet, sweet peñaze. And yeah, I will look at the video afterwards, guys. We will deal with that. Don't worry. Can you describe your feelings uh, through uh when you reached and when you left latin america what experience would you recommend to others and what experiences would you not recommend so i guess both of you guys when when we first came to latin america for me it's always very exciting each start of this of a project of this kind is very exciting it doesn't matter if it's if it's an african country or if it's in latin america it's always very exciting because spirits are high The energy levels are high and from then it only goes downhill in terms of energy. And that's why when I was leaving Latin America, I was very, very relieved. I was very relieved, but you're gonna get this after watching the very last episode because I actually had to spend three weeks in a small town in <laughs> northern Honduras waiting for a very special phenomenon to occur. I kind of have forgotten about that because you that was the first thing you did if I can say. Yeah, um I was very relieved because it was such a stressful st- stressful period of our lives. I think it was stress it was it was great. It was such a challenge but it was super stressful. My vitiligo got worse yeah. and when my vitiligo gets gets worse, I always know that it's due to stress. You're gonna turn into Michael Jackson. <laughs> yes. So, 
there is still a lot of questions everywhere, guys, but unfortunately, we just don't have enough time. Um, so I apologize. We'll try to get those answered offline or next time. I, I could probably answer them in the Discord, ask you later. Can you tell us what's coming? Because that's what we are super excited about. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, for me personally, probably the... It's hard because episode number seven and episode number nine are extremely unique. There are... Episode number seven is about an event and episode number nine is about a phenomenon. But both of them are extremely unique, weird. Never filmed. Never... F no, seven was filmed, so, but uh, nine was never filmed. Mm -hmm. um, but seven is so unknown. It wasn't filmed by like huge uh, production companies. There are some videos on the, on the internet, but I think our take will be the most detailed one and most thorough one. We dive really deep into the event. And uh, I can say that people will die. People Quatro will... personas. No. They don't understand. <laughs> they don't understand. <laughs> they know it from oh, Okay, sorry. I, d I forget about that. Well, people will die. People will actually die in this episode. It's brutal. At times, it's even funny. Mm -hmm. Because it's not only about the event, but also about things that happened before the event. Um, we met some, let's say, I wouldn't say indigenous people, but almost indigenous people. We performed some tradition with them. We took part in some incredible things. I wish I could tell you more, but it's just brutal, full of blood, full of tear gas, full of probably the m the worst piece of meal or slash drink I've ever encountered. And it's not ayahuasca, Thomas. It's not ayahuasca. No. I, I, I I'm 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 currently finishing the edit. It's gonna be I think at least thirty minutes long. It's 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 the best thing we've ever produced. <laughs> look at yeah. look at Michelle. Four people awesome content. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Michelle. Okay. <laughs> Michelle Thank Aguirre. You, Michelle. Ah, geez. But it also for me was a really visually attractive episode, really, because I never s saw something like that in my life. It's beautifully filmed. I have to give him credit. It's beautifully filmed. Working with that footage was an honor. It was beautiful. It is beautiful. Visually, storytelling, story-wise, it has everything that episode has everything i know that some episodes like the island or the techo thing may not be shocking or mm, i wouldn't say they're slow i i truly enjoy every single one i think like in terms of making a documentary they're great mm -hmm. but this one is just something else and i think everyone will truly enjoy this episode we are definitely looking forward to because it there's a lot of content a lot, a lot of, of things, content. a lot of things, a lot of things. There's not a single filler moment. There's something is always going on. And you keep wondering, okay, how is this going to end up? What? Are you kidding me? No. Is he really doing that? <gasps> it's going to leave you with your mouth wide open. I'm pretty sure about that. We are really looking forward to it. I guess as a last thing, um, we will think of your goodbye message, as you know. To, to the audience, but while you're doing that, um, what I mentioned to you guys about this secret event, all I can say is now is that uh, it's going to be Dano Drevo related. Yeah. It's going to be super exclusive just for those OG Discord members and maybe one or two subscribers on YouTube. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you might have the chance to do something exclusive with Dano Drevo for the Slovak people that watch. Back to you guys. Yeah. Some goodbye message. A goodbye message. Well, um, just a, a quick message still regarding the, the seventh episode. It's probably not coming out on Monday because I, I, there's still a lot of work 
It's uh, not coming out on Monday? It's probably coming out on Tuesday. No. On Tuesday. Tuesday. Is it going to be ready in the back end on Monday? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just asking. <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> Every no. time he's asking for a friend. <laughs> I, I just know that I won't be able to execute it to perfection uh, if it's coming on Monday. I need one more day, so okay. Tuesday it is. I don't know. Uh, see you in January, and where we're we gonna discuss? Where are we gonna discuss the best episodes? Yeah. The best ones: seven, eight, nine, ten. They're all great. A lot of things to to talk about. A lot of behind the scenes to talk about. It's It's insane. Those episodes are going to be insane. So we will, we'll, we will have a part two next year. Yes, yes. Following up on this, we will answer yeah. more questions. Maybe you'll have a chance to win this burro shirt signed by Peter and Vlad. Maybe. Who Maybe. knows? Maybe I will keep it. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> like it to be. A, and it's kind of covered in yeah. <laughs> sweat. Yeah, you can so. keep it. So we will see. But your goodbye message? Do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> No, come on. Can I try it in in Slovak? In Slovak? Yeah. yeah. Mm, you okay, can no. you you can do it. Okay. Vlad, your uh, Matjo, your your English has gotten so good from growing up. From yeah, the, growing from the up. first episode. No, I'm, I really mean it. Okay. He's like a different person. Don't doubt yourself. So, uh the ending I think for for a lot of people if you want to to do more than other people it's like you need to to have a luck but I think it's not only about luck it's about to to do your best and do everything what you want to take from your life So guys please do the best to be a good person in your in your life but come on it's it's just a life so don't be i don't know how can i say it in english uh don't take everything so seriously yeah don't take everything so seriously and just do your best and enjoy those are word of words of wisdom i want to thank both of you for coming today this has been the most popichi episode yet Really? Uh, of this podcast I really enjoyed myself. Well, we really enjoy talking about it as well. The Thank most you. watched as well? Okay. We still have 251 people watching. Nice. nice. A lot of people. Remember guys, 80% of you watch my content and you don't subscribe. So stop being cockots and subscribe. <laughs> Please. I really like your <laughs> That's a nice message. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so, so much again if you want to follow Matteo and Peter, what are your Instagram? Even though they know them, but Mato Popular, Mato Zednicek. Thank you so much again, and see you guys next time. Kisses. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs>